Countless zombies were approaching the only human survivor. The guy was sitting near a tall structure, waiting for the monsters to be close enough and holding a grenade at the ready. A few moments later, one of the zombies lunged at Michael. The hero finally waited for this moment and pulled the pin with a smile, rejoicing that this hell would finally end. A second later, there was an explosion that caught most of the monsters. Suddenly, a funnel appeared in the sky from which a white beam descended. The guy soared into the air faster than the fire could harm him. The descending beam enveloped his body. He watched everything that was happening in amazement, not understanding what was happening. Michael was transported back in time to the day the apocalypse began. Robbers broke into the convenience store, and all the customers left in a hurry. The man pointed a knife at the saleswoman and demanded that she give him all the money. She obediently opened the cash register, not intending to risk her life. A moment later, the girl handed the money to the man, telling him to take it all and leave. He looked at Linda with a creepy smile, thinking how lucky he was to stumble upon such a beauty today. When the man began to slowly approach her, she retreated towards the wall, starting to slowly slide down it out of fear. The girl took the first thing that came to hand in self-defense, saying that if he did not leave, she would call for help. But the robber only laughed, stretching out his hands to Linda. When he tore off a piece of her shirt, she screamed for help. Suddenly an explosion was heard behind the man. When he turned around, he saw a strange guy with a weapon. When Michael found himself in the past, the system said that the guy had ten minutes before being transferred back. He decided to take essentials and water and food. He moved to the front, intending to find out where the warehouse was, but was stopped by a man with a knife. The robber demanded that the guy stop pretending and take off the toy machine. But the next second, something sharp flashed near his cheek. The hero told him to shut up. The man fell to his knees in fear and began to beg for forgiveness. Michael was near him in a second, knocking him out with one blow to the back of the head. Then he approached the girl, asking where their warehouse was. She pointed towards the door that was for staff only. The hero thanked her and threw a hairpin in her direction as thanks. The girl deftly caught the gift and then tried to stop the guy. When he turned around, Linda thanked him for saving him and threw him the key to the warehouse. Having received the key, the guy said that in the future she could find him and he would fulfill any of her requests. Linda didn't understand what he meant. A couple of moments later, the hero stood at the entrance to the warehouse. He needed to collect as many supplies as possible in five minutes. He was glad that the spatial ring had a fairly large capacity. He emptied rack after rack. Everything was collected when he had one second left, after which the space-time funnel sucked the guy in, again moving him through time. In the space from which Michael disappeared, some time has passed since the start of the apocalypse. Two guys cornered a frightened girl. They were thinking about how much they would get from selling her. Linda tearfully begged them to let her go. The sudden noise caused the men to turn their attention away from her. Michael appeared behind them, pointing a weapon at them, saying that it was low for two men to attack one girl. Linda was happy that someone came to her aid. She asked the guy to take her from this place. Michael didn't recognize her right away, but when she approached, he realized that this was the same saleswoman. The hero said that he would fulfill her request, but first he needed to deal with one problem. Two men who had been watching the guy all this time asked who he was, that he dared to interfere in the affairs of the Axe Gang. If he wanted to die, then they would definitely fulfill the guy's wish. The guy activated his abilities, covering the daggers with his aura. He asked his opponents if they really thought it was so easy to kill him. The next moment, a mark on his hand lit up. This did not escape the gaze of one of the bandits. Remembering where he had seen this symbol, he shouted to his partner that he was one of the awakened ones. They began to apologize and beg for mercy. But the hero was not going to show mercy to them. A second attack was enough for him to get rid of both. Linda, who was watching this, was amazed at the guy's speed. It was hard for her to believe that an ordinary person could move like that. Looking at her, Michael asked if she had really forgotten him. Seeing the misunderstanding on her face, he decided to give her a hint by pronouncing the words, before the end of the world, shop, robber, hairpin. A few seconds later, her eyes widened in surprise. She recognized him and asked why he hadn't changed at all since that day. The hero changed the subject, saying that she should not worry as long as she is with him. He will fulfill her request and take her away from here. She suddenly asked Michael to save her boyfriend from the Axe Gang, 
saying that they had been hunting the couple for a long time. Michael turned around and said that he only promised her one favor. Then he added that he was 100% sure that her boyfriend sold her. Suddenly the hero heard voices from around the corner. Robbers from the Axe Gang came out to them. The girl immediately noticed her boyfriend among them. She ran towards them, trying to find out if he was okay. The guy turned to the leader, saying that she was his girlfriend and could be sold at a profit. Linda was shocked by her lover's words. She hoped that he was joking with her in a similar way. But the leader told her that her boyfriend was absolutely serious. He sold her to them for a bag of bread. She said with tears in her eyes that this couldn't be true. He couldn't betray her. They loved each other. Noah said that he was only pretending so that he could sell her profitably in the future, but he never loved her. The girl was hurt by the words she heard. She blamed herself for being blinded by love for several years and not noticing many obvious things. The gang leader began to approach her, saying that he could comfort her. Suddenly, Michael blocked his way, saying that he was not interested in all the details of their relationship, but he promised this girl to take her far away from this place and ensure safety. One of the bandit's subordinates took out an axe and began to threaten the hero. But the next second, this daredevil fell to the ground with a dagger pierced through his neck. After this, the hero said that if they did not leave, he would kill them all. The bandits were talking among themselves that this guy was awakened and they didn't have a single chance against him. Suddenly, the leader showed his abilities, saying that the guy is not the only one awakened here. He told the hero to give him the girl, then he would let him go without causing much harm. Crying, Linda told her savior to leave her here. She didn't want him to get hurt because of her. Michael turned around and replied that he always keeps his promises. After that, he took out his blade, preparing to attack the enemy. The leader, seeing the confident guy in front of him, said that he underestimated his abilities. Without listening to the end of the man's idle chatter, Michael attacked the enemy. The man did not expect that he could be defeated with just one blow. The girl felt joy mixed with surprise, watching how easily Michael dealt with his opponent. After this, the hero looked bloodthirsty at the rest of the gang, saying that now it was their turn. They began to back away, begging Michael for mercy. But unfortunately for them, the guy was deaf to their pleas, sliding between his victims with lightning speed. He took their lives with one action. Only Noah survived. He began to apologize for his mistake, asking not to kill him. Michael looked at Linda, saying that he will do as she decides. The girl said that he saved her once, so he should save his life. But she never wants to see her former lover again. Noah was grateful to her, saying that he would not approach her again, after which he ran to the other end of the alley. The hero who watched this thought that he had seen a lot of things during the apocalypse. This person could cause a lot of problems in the future. So he decided to leave a mark on it. The well-aimed shot reached its target, and the man felt a sudden pain in his back. When Linda asked what he did, the hero replied that he did not kill him, but only released several rays of air energy into his body. The next moment, a yellow firefly appeared in front of him. The guy did not understand what it was. The moment the guy grabbed him, the system congratulated him on his second level of awakening. He was glad that his strength had increased. He understood that there were still many mysteries in this world, and he needed to assemble a team and return to the research institute from which his time travel began. Linda noticed that something was happening with the guy and asked if everything was okay with him. He replied that everything was fine, and since she was safe now, she could go. He had a couple of things left to do. When the guy moved forward, she stopped him, asking him to take her with him, arguing that she could help him. The hero asked how she was going to help him. The girl replied that she did not have superpowers, but she could offer another way, after which she began to take off her dress. The hero was surprised by her actions and fell out of reality for a few seconds. After pulling himself together, he approached her and told her to follow him. Sometime later, they came out onto a crowded street. Linda asked what this place was, because she had never been to this part of the city. The hero replied that this area is a paradise for the rich and hell for the poor. You can buy anything here. When the girl asked where they were going, he pointed to a tall building in front of them with an auction sign. There were a lot of people in the auction house served by girls in bunny costumes. Once inside, the girl asked what they were doing here. She felt uncomfortable being here. The guy reassured her, saying that only here they could fully replenish supplies. The hero approached the standing staff, asking to be taken to the auction room. 
The girls looked arrogantly at the approaching guy, coming to the conclusion that this was another poor man intending to sell his girlfriend. One of them said that they could not take him where he wanted. After that, the guy took out three chocolates, after which he repeated his request. The waitresses began to hang on to Michael during breaks, listing all their advantages. To their surprise, he pointed to the girl standing calmly behind them. The hero approached her that she could do him a favor for a reward in the form of chocolate. He asked to take his companion to the shower and give him new clothes. She agreed without hesitation, thanking the guy for choosing her. Linda said it would cost her too much and she didn't need it. But Michael interrupted the girl, saying that his people should wear and use only the best. His words resonated pleasantly in the girl's heart. She was flattered that he considered her his man, and she agreed. Sometime later, the couple was in the auction room. The presenter presented the first slot, a pair of mutated zombies that can compare with the awakened ones of the first level. The starting price was announced at a thousand rounds. Linda was surprised that they were selling something like that here. Michael explained that the crystals in the brains of mutated zombies can awaken or enhance the powers of a normal person. Meanwhile, the presenter moved on to announce the next lot. A truck appeared on the stage that could withstand attacks from awakened people of the third level. In addition, it could accommodate about 20 people, and its power was 800 horsepower. The hero realized that this was exactly what he needed to survive outside the city. A fierce struggle for this lot began in the hall. Suddenly, one person appeared who made everyone pay attention to him. The man said that this truck would be his. He was offering two million rounds of ammunition. There was no one in the room who wanted to compete with such an influential figure as the boss of the Berserker group. Nicholas walked up to the stage, telling the girl there to announce the results of the auction, who immediately declared him the owner of this slot. But she is suddenly interrupted, saying that the auction is not over. The man turned around to see this madman. Michael said he was offering three million rounds of ammunition. Nicholas asked the boy who he was that dared to stand in his way. The hero replied that the man's group could not afford such a high price. It would greatly affect their supplies. In response to his statement, Nicholas said that he was betting three million and one hundred thousand rounds of ammunition. Michael upped the bet to four million. The man tried not to give in to the boy until the very end, but when he announced six million, his entourage began to try to stop Nicholas, realizing that this was not a feasible amount for them. This made him even more angry. He couldn't lose to this guy so easily. The next moment, Nicholas headed towards the old man sitting at a distance, who is the creator of the truck. He said that the berserkers would fulfill any order if he sold the truck to him. The master thought this offer was good. He had heard about the power of this group, so he agreed to the deal. After that, Nicholas, pleased with himself, turned to Michael, saying that he had won. The hero decided to use the same strategy as his opponent. He approached the old man, saying that he had something that might interest him, after which he showed him the box. When he looked at it, the master was very surprised. The guy said it was a limited edition idol figurine that was discontinued 30 years ago. Nicholas laughed at him, saying that something like that could not interest the master. The man did not pay attention to the distracting conversations in the hall. He could not believe that what he had dreamed of from a young age could finally be in his hands. He asked if the hero had any more figures. Michael smiled as he placed a few more boxes on the floor. The old man looked at it all happily, saying that he would exchange the truck for these figures. After his words, Nicholas recovered from the shock, saying that he could pay more. The master apologized, explaining that nothing could compare in value to the beautiful idols of the past. Everyone in the room was amazed that he exchanged the armored truck for ordinary dolls. Meanwhile, the old man approached the hero, smilingly saying that he had a promising future. Nicholas told his subordinates to prepare an ambush at the exit of the auction house. He couldn't let this guy go so easily. Sometime later, a new lot was announced. A girl who had sensory ability came onto the stage. Nicholas immediately became eager to purchase this lot. The hero thought that this ability would be very useful for survival. The presenter said that this girl is awakened. She can sense zombies within a few kilometers. Suddenly, Alice took the microphone, saying that she was selling herself voluntarily, but she had a condition. Everyone was excited by this statement. Everyone was confident that they could fulfill all its conditions. The next moment, she announced that this condition was the destruction of the Berserker group. Nicholas remembered her. The girl was part of a group of hawks that managed to elude them. After his words, 
one of those present recalled that relatively recently the berserkers ambushed the hawks and destroyed almost everyone, with the exception of the escaped girl. The presenter realized that at this rate she would not receive anything, and it was time for her to take control of the situation. She announced the starting price of ten million rounds. Michael allowed his companion to bid, asking her to announce their bid. Nicholas was infuriated that this guy was again interfering where he shouldn't, and, taking out a pistol, he said that today he would not get out of here alive. The hero, smiling, asked if the man was going to desecrate the auction house with murder. After his words, Nicholas announced to everyone that he had a personal war with this impudent man. If someone wants to give up his life, then let them try to intervene. At his words, everyone began to run towards the exit. The next moment, Nicholas shot at the hero. The guy easily dodged the bullet. The next second, he was behind the man, saying that his bullets were very slow. When the hero put the machine gun to the enemy's head, Nicholas stood motionless. Having analyzed what had happened, he asked the guy if he was awakened. Michael replied that it didn't matter whether he was awakened or not, he just wanted to get out of here alive. The remaining subordinates of Nicholas took out their weapons, telling the guy to let their boss go. The next moment, the man told Michael to dare to shoot him. Then his chances of getting out of here would be greatly reduced. The hero could not ignore such a polite request from his opponent. He pulled the trigger, putting a bullet through the man's head. The gang members who watched the death of the leader set out to take revenge on Michael and began shelling. The guy deftly avoided all the bullets, gradually approaching his opponents. Once close enough, he knocked everyone out one by one. Michael did not kill them. He watched as they left the room in a hurry until the guy changed his mind. A few moments later, he turned to Alice, asking her to come with him. The girl replied that the guy should have caught the berserkers first and not provoked them. The hero pointed to the dead Nicholas, saying that the girl had nothing to fear. There was nothing scary in this gang. After his words, Linda approached her, saying that she would be safe if she went with them and became Michael's subordinate. She looked at the guy again, coming to the conclusion that he could help her take revenge. Sometime later, they ran down the street trying to catch up with the escaped members of the group. Alice used her ability to scan everything around her, surrounded by several kilometers. A few moments later, she managed to find three guys. After she gave this information to Michael, he told her to watch his back while he took care of it. Immediately after that, he increased his speed, heading towards the indicated location. At that moment, when the girls ran to the desired alley, they saw Michael slowly leaving there. Approaching his companions, he told Alice that without her ability, dealing with these guys would have been quite difficult. Suddenly, the girl asked what his plan was. Killing Nicholas, he angered his brother, who had probably already put a reward on their heads. Now, it would be more difficult for them to move in the open. The hero just smiled, saying that if someone wants to kill him, then they should be prepared to pay the appropriate price for this decision. Linda attracted the guy's attention by calling him by name. When he asked what was the matter, she said that her ex had recently asked her to meet with him. He wanted to apologize again. But the girl did not want to go to this meeting. Michael said that this was a great opportunity. She had to go. The hero simply could not miss the chance to get rid of such an annoying person. After explaining the plan to his companions for some time, he said that he would give Alice several useful things, and later she would go and hide them in the place they had appointed. Meanwhile, at the Berserker headquarters, the second leader was torn with rage. He could not understand how people from such a strong group could not even lay a finger on only three people. Suddenly, one of the subordinates came out in front with an unknown guy, saying that he had brought someone who knew a great way to lure out their target. Jack examined the standing boy. He looked too unreliable, and his body was terribly weak. The man doubted that he could be of any use. The next moment, Noah reported that the guy who killed Jack's brother had now teamed up with his ex. He managed to arrange a meeting with her. Michael would definitely be somewhere nearby at this moment. The leader said that he would believe him but if his plan failed, then he should be prepared to say goodbye to his life. But if successful, he promised the guy five packs of instant noodles. Hearing about the promised reward, Noah said that he would not let him down and that he could be counted on. The next morning, Linda and Michael met with her ex. She asked why he asked her to meet. The guy began to apologize, saying that he realized all his past mistakes and asked her for a chance to start over. 
Linda took a few steps away from him, saying that she had said everything clearly last time. After her words, Noah laughed, saying that if it was because of this guy behind her back, then she need not be afraid anymore. He will die today. Immediately after his words, a gang of berserkers came out to them. Noah shouted to the leader that their plan was a success. Linda realized that she was being used again for their own dirty purposes. Noah admitted that it was quite easy to pull off, knowing the girl's soft and trouble-free character. She began to apologize to Michael, saying that because of her they had fallen into a trap, but the guy reassured her by saying that this was exactly what he was counting on when he gave approval for this meeting. He said that this was a great opportunity, if not for her, they would not have been able to bring them all together. Jack mocked the hero. It seemed to him that the guy was too arrogant, saying that he would get rid of them all alone. But the guy said that he did not come here empty-handed, after which he gave the command to Alice. The next second, an explosion was heard in the place where his opponents stood. Jack realized they were in an ambush and ordered his men to leave immediately. Michael wondered where the man intended to go if explosions were happening everywhere. Immediately after his words, several more explosions were heard. Noah stood to the side and watched in disbelief. Michael turned his attention to the guy backing away, saying that his story had come to an end. Noah sank to the ground, begging the hero not to kill him. Seeing that there was no reaction on the hero's face to his pleas, he turned to Linda, hoping that she could stand up for him. He crawled on his knees to the girl, asking her to help him in memory of their relationship. Watching Linda's reaction, Noah was fully confident that she would agree. A few seconds later, the girl plunged a knife into her ex-boyfriend's stomach, wishing him to burn in hell. Linda said that he was right, and that before she was too soft and allowed herself to be used, thanks to him she managed to change. After that, Michael said that now it was time for them to leave here. Jack, who came out of the fire, asked where they were going to go, with one unfinished business. The hero was surprised when he realized that the man standing in front of him was a third level awakened. The next moment he rushed at Michael. The man was a couple of steps away from his goal when he was hit by a suddenly appearing truck. After Alice stopped near her friends, the guy said that she was on time like never before. After everyone got into the car, Michael said that the noise they made today would attract a lot of dangerous people. They better get as far away from here as possible. When they pulled out onto a nearby street, they had already been watched for some time. One of the groups that set out to capture these three was already preparing their plan. Alice noticed the surveillance and began to rush along the crowded street in an attempt to break away from the tail. But Jack was actively catching up with them in his car, not sparing anyone who got in his way. Immediately behind him were the leaders of the two best groups in the city. Alice told Michael that there were trucks at the nearest intersection that would block their path. The hero commanded the girl to speed up and drive towards the main gate of the city. They rushed at full speed, not paying attention to the people they got in their way. Approaching the gate, the girl said that they would not be able to break through it. It was made of thin steel plates. But the guy convinced her otherwise, telling her to trust him. During the auction, he overheard that a group of berserkers were involved in the production of this gate, and the steel plate that was given to them was replaced with some wooden panels. Alice decided to listen to the guy's words and warned them to be ready for the blow. Residents who realized what exactly these madmen were going to do fled as far as possible from this place, saving their lives. As Jack approached, he began to worry that they might know the secret of this gate. He tried to reassure himself with the fact that those to whom she was known besides him were no longer alive for a long time. The hero calmly waited, and Linda, sitting next to her, was already preparing for death, but she was glad that if they died, Michael would be next to her. A couple of moments later, he ordered the girl behind the wheel to begin firing from the cannons with which the truck was equipped. The next second, several shells flew into the gate. When they reached their target, there was a strong explosion, which caused cracks to appear on the massive doors. The truck burst through the flames and in the next second found itself outside the city. Alice could hardly believe that their plan had worked and that they were alive. Members of the groups tried to comprehend what had happened before their eyes. Suddenly, through the resulting hole, many zombies began to rush into the city. The leaders returned to their trucks. Their goal was to destroy the danger hanging over them. Jack rushed forward, crushing most of the zombies. Meanwhile, Michael's team also destroyed the monsters that came their way. Linda was worried, 
that there were many ordinary people in the city who would not be able to stand up for themselves, but the hero reassured her by saying that high-level zombies outside the city were regularly destroyed, and ordinary ones would not be able to cause any harm. The guy said that they should be grateful to them. He revealed to them the impending danger. Sooner or later the zombies would be able to get inside. When he pulled out the bloody clothes, the girl asked what he was going to do with it. He tore the fabric into shreds, saying that he had one crazy plan. Immediately after this, he threw the pieces of cloth outside, and, at the smell of blood, the zombies immediately ran to the truck. The next second, Linda turned sharply and crushed them all. Jack's team, which was pursuing them, spotted their target from afar. The chief was informed that Michael's truck had stopped moving, and they seemed to be out of fuel. Jack was pleased with this news. Meanwhile, Michael sat in his truck and waited for his pursuers to approach. When the arrivals began to get out of the trucks, the hero said that he had already waited for them. The group members were glad that their goal itself came into their hands. Jack said they were surrounded, and the guy had nowhere to run. Michael stood up from his seat, saying that he thought completely differently. The leader laughed at his words. He believed that the boy had become crazy by declaring such things. Afterwards, he told the hero that this time he would not fall for his trick. He had brought special awakened ones with him. They were not afraid of bombs. Michael praised the man for thinking enough to check the area for traps. He pointed away from them, saying that there was one thing he had not foreseen. Members of the group began to turn around, hearing strange sounds behind them. A crowd of zombies was approaching them from all sides. They realized that they had fallen into another trap, but this time their chances of survival were much lower. The men began shooting at the monsters, trying to stop their invasion. Jack asked if the guy had lured them here on purpose after spreading the smell of blood throughout the area. The guy confirmed his thoughts, saying that during the explosion he picked up several things of the man's dead comrades. The leader called him crazy, after which he turned around and ordered his subordinates to get out of here. The next moment the hero attacked the enemy who had turned away. The man managed to block the attack with his weapon at the last second. After that, they leaned back in different directions. The leader asked what the guy was thinking about if there are even more undead, then they will not leave here alive. Michael replied that he didn't care. He promised Alice to destroy the berserkers, so he will fulfill his promise at any cost. The girl sitting in the car began to cry when she heard the hero's words. Linda, who was nearby, said that they were very lucky to meet such a person as him. Meanwhile, Jack ordered his guys to clear the way while he finished off Michael. His deputy immediately got into the car, following the instructions. Several cars moved forward, shooting all the zombies. John said that his guys, with the firepower of the trucks, would be enough to break through. The guy made a big mistake by missing his chance to escape. Michael agreed with him, saying that he does have a lot of people at the moment. After that, he gave the command to Alice. She immediately pressed the activation button on the truck. A couple of seconds later, shells were flying towards Jack's team. Looking at this, the man ordered everyone to hide behind the trucks. Michael was again one step ahead of him. The hero said that these were not all the surprises he had prepared. The next moment, something exploded in the air and a strange liquid poured onto the group. They couldn't figure out what it was, it just had a disgusting smell. Suddenly Jack realized that it was sewage waste. Michael confirmed his guess, saying that there were some substances there whose smell greatly stimulated the ferocity of the undead. The guy was enjoying complete control of the situation. He informed them that being dangerously close to hundreds of zombies under the influence of this smell, they would die. Confirming the words of the hero, the zombies became more aggressive, and the men could not concentrate due to the stench surrounding them. A few moments later, the group members were defeated by the undead. Jack could only watch in horror as his comrades died. Alice, who came up from behind, said that now he understands what it's like to lose all your loved ones and not be able to help in any way. The man was filled with rage and was about to attack the girl. He vowed to kill her even at the cost of his life. Michael arrived in time and pushed his friend back, telling Jack that he was his opponent, not her. The hero held back the enemy's furious attack, the efforts of the dagger with his aura. The guy said that as long as he was here, the man didn't even have to try to touch any of his people. After his words, Jack transferred his attack to the ground, saying that in this case, he would first get rid of the boy. Michael managed to assess his abilities, and he decided that he needed to be more careful in this battle. 
The girls ran up to the hero and asked if everything was okay with him and whether they should prepare to retreat. Their words angered the leader. He asked where they intended to retreat. He couldn't let the man who had destroyed all his comrades get away with impunity. The man used one of his strongest attacks, launching a powerful wave of fire. Michael and the girls barely managed to avoid a direct hit. The next moment he jumped on their car. Jack was not pleased that the enemy remained unharmed. He asked if he could also avoid his subsequent attacks. The hero replied that he was not going to run away all the time. He promised to get rid of all members of the group. The girls began to dissuade the guy from such a rash action. It was obvious that he would not be able to stand up to Jack. The hero turned to them, smiling, saying that everything would be fine with him, he would be able to win. Immediately after that, he jumped from the truck towards his opponent. The man was glad that his opponent had willingly stepped into the arms of death. He was ready to attack at any moment. When the hero approached a sufficient distance, Jack repeated his previous attack. To his surprise, the flame passed through the guy and he himself began to fade. The man realized that it was an illusion technique, but it was too late. The next second, Michael stood behind his opponent. He plunged the weapon into the leader's body, but a thin layer of protection covered the leader's entire body, preventing the blade from passing further. The hero did not expect that the enemy would have a strengthening ability. John wanted to counterattack, but the guy managed to separate himself to a safe distance. He then asked if his plasma shell was a level 3 ability. The man confirmed his assumption, saying that while he is in the Avatar state, his body is covered with a layer of high-temperature flames, even bullets will not harm him. Having accumulated enough strength, Michael said that he liked to challenge difficult things. The next moment, he created several clones of himself, which rushed towards Jack. The man, in turn, strengthened the protective shell, saying that he would destroy all the pathetic copies of the enemy until he spent all his energy reserves. At that moment, the clones simultaneously threw their daggers at him. John stood contentedly, watching the weapon bounce off his body. He said that such techniques were useless against him. Linda was very worried Michael had not managed to strike a single blow during all this time. She did not know how they could help the guy. Alice standing nearby said that he should find a weak point and only then attack, in which case he would have a chance to break through the man's defense. The hero had a harder time with this technique, breathing heavily. He said that he underestimated Jack. He has an amazing ability. The leader laughed, saying that until his flame goes out, the guy is powerless in front of him. After his words, Michael noticed that the enemy's flame began to fade. The leader thought that the guy was trying to joke like this. It was impossible for his flame to go out. Suddenly, Jack felt that something was wrong. Examining his body, he saw that his protective layer had disappeared. Looking at the enemy's incomprehensible face, the guy explained that to maintain his flame, a man needs oxygen. And by a lucky chance, the guy's ability is connected with air. All this time, he removed oxygen from certain areas, deactivating Jack's skill. It was difficult for the leader to believe that some kid was able to deceive him without making much effort. A moment later, Michael cut his opponent's throat, ending the drawn-out battle. Linda was glad that the hero won without receiving much damage. And Alice sank to the floor. Tears of joy filled her eyes. Revenge for her comrades was accomplished. Now she can live without this burden. Suddenly, a golden light reached out from the leader's dead body towards Michael. The guy was surprised when he was enveloped in a warm glow. He remembered that this had already happened once. The next moment, the system congratulated him on successfully killing the awakened third level and awarded him a hundred evolution points. The hero was glad that his efforts were adequately rewarded. The zombies nearby reminded of themselves. The undead began to flock to the guy. Michael destroyed the zombies that were dangerously close to him. After that, he ordered the girls to retreat in accordance with the previously planned route. After his words, Alice immediately began to climb back into the truck, taking the driver's seat. A moment later, the car moved towards the guy. The girl told the hero to immediately climb onto the truck. The guy didn't think long and deftly jumped onto the car. Once safe, he told Alice to detonate the explosives prepared earlier. The girl took out the remote control and without hesitation, pressed the desired button. The next second, many explosions were heard behind them. He threw away the remaining undead that blocked their path using the power of air. One person watched the actions taking place below from the cliff. 
The girl was interested in the guy who killed the leader of the berserkers. She was looking forward to their battle. A couple of seconds later, Mina dropped to her knees, aiming her deadly weapon at the truck. The girl sincerely hoped that the guy would appreciate her gift. Michael noticed that something was rapidly approaching them from the air. Alice also noticed this and asked the guy what they should do. The hero told the girls not to worry, he would sort it out. Then he jumped towards the projectile. Linda, watching this crazy act, could not hold back her tears. She was very afraid for Michael. The hero thought that he was obliged to put an end to all the annoying individuals in order to ensure their safety. The next second, he threw his dagger at the projectile. This action was followed by a large explosion. Linda didn't know if Michael was still alive. The clouds of rising dust obscured her view. Alice tried to understand the situation and understand who could shoot at them. Mina, who was watching, was disappointed that the boy she had pinned her hopes on died so quickly. Suddenly, a dagger flew out of the cloud of dust. The girl didn't even have time to blink when something sharp passed across her cheek. She looked with surprise and confusion at the dagger that was stuck in the stone behind her back. The next moment, Michael appeared in front of Mina, who said that it was too early for her to play with such dangerous toys. The girl was surprised that he was able to survive any attack. Smiling, she said that she liked playing against strong people. After that, she took out two pistols, pointing them at the enemy. The hero only watched her with a smile, saying that a weapon of this level was completely useless against him. Activating his technique, he said that the girl should surrender. Mina was angered by his words. She is not one to give up without a fight. A moment later, she began shooting the gun at the guy, intending to kill him. But all the bullets flew to the ground, colliding with the hero's air shield. Noticing that Mina was confused, he took off his shield and rushed towards her. As he approached, he said it was time for the girl to stop before it was too late. She jumped to the side, taking out her special grenade, which would certainly be the last thing the guy saw before he died. To Mina's surprise, Michael moved behind her with lightning speed. When she felt the guy's hands on her, she dropped the grenade out of fear. The hero took advantage of this and deftly picked up such a dangerous thing. The next moment he said that once her bomb was in his possession, Mina had no chance of winning. The girl smiled at his words, showing the pulled pin in her hand and saying that the guy needs to be more careful. He realized that such a dangerous thing in his hand would explode in the next few moments. The next second, he turned around and threw it as far as possible. Michael noted that this girl was very smart. He couldn't even notice when she pulled this trick. He assumed that Mina was also an awakened one. A couple of seconds later, there was a strong explosion. Despite the distance, the power of this bomb was enough to hook Michael and Mina. The girl sat on the ground, recovering from what had happened. Suddenly, the girl saw a blade pointed at her. When she raised her head, she saw a smiling guy, saying that it was useless to teach her intelligence. It would be easier to kill her. She informed him that as soon as her heart stopped, the bomb implanted in her body would explode, turning everything within a 30-kilometer radius into a huge crater. After her words, the hero remembered that he had heard about one bounty hunter. She had an amazing ability to greatly enhance firearms. It is not difficult to guess that this is the same girl in front of him now. Michael thought it would be great if she joined his team. Mina noticed the doubt on her opponent's face and said that if he was afraid of dying, then he had better let her go. Unexpectedly for the girl, the guy asked if she wanted to join him. He had a lot of babes that might interest her. He's heard a lot about how she's just a weapons maniac, so there shouldn't be any problems persuading her to join him. Hearing the hero's proposal, Mina misinterpreted what he meant, remembering her past experience when she fell into the hands of perverts. Crawling away from the guy, she indignantly asked how he could offer something like that to an underage girl. She would never join him. Michael was genuinely surprised by her reaction. He assumed that there was some kind of misunderstanding between them. Mina responded indignantly that there was nothing here that she could misunderstand. She said that if it weren't for the guy's abilities, she would have immediately destroyed him, like other types like him. Suddenly, the couple's attention was attracted by screams from somewhere outside. Linda ran up to the guy, excitedly asking if he was okay. A couple of seconds later, Alice joined her, asking a similar question. Mina, who was watching this scene, was amazed by the ideal figures of these girls. Michael watched with pleasure the changes on the gun lover's face. After waiting for a while, he asked her if she still thought that with such stunning partners, 
he might be interested in a child. Mina was angered by his words. She said with irritation that he should take a closer look. She was no longer a child. After the girl spoke, Alice asked where such a cute child came from here. Linda, in turn, handed Mina the candy, saying that such a little girl must have been very scared. Looking at these two girls, she was forced to admit that she could never compare to them. The hero extended his hand to her, asking if she had changed her mind about his proposal. He could offer her very strong guns. He was confident that he would be able to get her almost any weapon, because the system store had a full variety of them, and with enough points, there would be no problems with this. Mina stood up on her own, saying that she did not believe that the guy could have a decent weapon. He asked her to wait a couple of minutes, facing her incredulous gaze. The hero told the system that he wants to purchase a weapon. The next moment, the system opened the catalog, reporting that the guy now had a hundred points, after which she suggested one of the most suitable weapons for him, a rocket launcher called the Dragon. It has a fairly high class and was designed as the best weapon for a single soldier. Michael decided that this rocket launcher was exactly what he needed, so he reached for the buy button. Suddenly, Alice felt something was wrong and turned towards their truck. All the zombies began to move away from their car. Suddenly, loud sounds were heard a few meters away from them, after which dust again rose into the air, blocking their view. A couple of seconds later through it, the girls saw the outline of a huge figure that was rapidly approaching. The next moment, a huge monster came out to them, emitting a terrifying roar. Linda realized that this was a mutated zombie, which, apparently, was attracted by the accumulation of small undead here. Alice said that she had heard about him before. This monster is one of the three strongest among mutants. Ordinary weapons are useless against them. Turning to Michael, she asked what they should do. Mina's eyes lit up with excitement at the sight of this zombie. She ran forward, saying that this is an extremely rare species of undead. She was very lucky to stumble upon it today after which she set her sights on him, imagining how much she could earn by selling crystals obtained from his brain. Suddenly the hero stopped the girl, blocking her goal. Mina didn't understand why he was stopping her. The next moment she noticed something in the guy's hands that attracted her attention. The girl asked what kind of gun he was holding. Raising his weapon, he said that this was his big baby, after which he asked Mina's opinion about it, noting that it was much larger than the one in the girl's hands. Mina replied with a bit of irritation that she may be bigger, but this does not yet prove that she is better in combat power. Michael patted his gun proudly, saying that it was not as weak as it might seem. He decided to prove his words in action by targeting her at the mutant. The monster realized that he was in danger. A second later, he decided to attack those below. The mutant was rapidly approaching the guy, closing the distance between them. Linda began to worry that the monster was getting too close to them. The hero said that they should not worry. He is confident in what he is going to do. After that, he pressed the button that activated his baby. The guy told everyone to get ready and take a couple of steps back. A few seconds later, he released the button and pointed the cannon at the mutant. The projectile he fired completely absorbed the monster. Mina was surprised at how powerful the guy's weapon was. A minute later, a large crater formed a few meters away from them, leaving no hint of the presence of a monster here some time ago. Satisfied with himself, the hero turned to Mina, reporting that the threat had been eliminated. The girl looked at the guy in front of her with admiring eyes. Michael asked if she wanted this gun for herself. If so, then first she needed to join his team. The girl quickly approached him, saying that she accepted the challenge. Wrapping her arms and legs around him, she said that as long as he did not give her this baby, Mina was free to do whatever she wanted. She tried to take the gun away from the guy, but he said that the girl should get off him first. Mina objected, saying that if the hero did not give her the weapon, then she would never get off it. Alice, who was watching this scene, said that they had not yet gotten rid of all the undead surrounding them. They did not have time for pampering. Linda, standing next to her, said with a smile that we could forgive them for this pampering. Watching them, the girl had the feeling that she had returned to the world before the apocalypse. They decided to set up camp in this place, and a few hours later, everyone was sitting around the fire. Michael stood up, saying it was time to distribute their responsibilities. Heading towards the truck, he said that they were on a hill, so ordinary undead would not be able to climb here. Everyone would be on duty in turn. The hero volunteered to be the first to be on duty, Mina asked when she could receive the promised gun. 
The guy replied that until he completely trusted her, he would not give her up. After his words, the girl stood up irritably, saying that she was going to bed. Following her, Linda and Alice also headed to their tents. All this time, both girls were thinking about the same thing, namely that as soon as everyone fell asleep, each of them intended to go to Michael. Meanwhile, the hero was thinking that in just a few days, he had managed to assemble a team of four people, and it was time to go to the research institute. Suddenly, the door to the truck opened. A moment later, a smiling Alice appeared at this place, which greatly surprised the guy. He asked why she was here. Everyone should have gone to bed. Having climbed inside, the girl replied that she wanted to thank him for destroying the Berserker group. The hero replied that gratitude was useless. Comrades should help each other. She had better go to bed. Tomorrow, they would have an equally difficult day. Ignoring the guy's words, she began to take off her jacket, languidly saying that she promised to give herself to the one who would help her take revenge. Confused, Michael pulled aside, trying to reason with the girl. He said that others could hear what was happening here. Alice clung to the flushed guy, saying that before leaving, she made sure that everyone was fast asleep and had nothing to worry about. After which she pulled away from him a little, embarrassedly asking him to try to be gentle with her during her first experience. His thoughts at that moment were in complete disarray. The remnants of his mind were telling him to pull himself together and protect them both from wrong decisions. But another part of the mind said that now the apocalypse and such things are normal. His thoughts were interrupted by Linda knocking on the glass. The couple was taken by surprise by the girl's appearance. They urgently needed to come up with something. Without waiting for an answer, Linda reached for the door handle intending to open it. Alice panicked and asked the guy what she should do. The only thing he could think of was to hide it behind his seat. The moment Linda opened the door, she saw a sweaty Michael sitting in a strange position. She asked what happened to him. The hero tried to hide his panic behind a smile, saying that it was very stuffy in the car in the evenings. Alice, who was sitting behind, tried not to even breathe so as not to give herself away. She was interested in why Linda came to Michael at such an hour. The sudden realization that the girl had come for the same purpose as herself made her nervous. The guy said that it was very stuffy in here and suggested moving outside and talking there. He was desperately trying to come up with a plan to allow Alice to slip out of the truck unnoticed. To his surprise, Linda replied that there was no need for that. If they talked outside, they might wake the others. After her words, the guy began to feel nervous again. He noticed that Alice behaved like this for a few moments, but now she is hiding right behind his seat. He cannot allow anything to happen in this situation. Clearing his throat, the hero said that now was not the best time or place for this kind of thing. Linda didn't understand what he meant. The next moment, she looked at her clothes and realized that the situation might seem very ambiguous. The girl said with embarrassment that she came to him so that he could help her become awakened. She wants to become stronger, because at the moment, she is the weakest of their team. Hearing her words, Michael breathed a sigh of relief. Alice also couldn't help but exhale a sigh of relief. She was glad that the girl was not interested in the guy in another way. The next moment, to their mutual surprise, Linda approached the hero, saying that if he wants, then she doesn't mind. Michael moved away from the girl as far as the space of the truck would allow him, saying that today was not a good day. Crawling towards him, she said that she thought differently. This was a great opportunity when no one could stop them. The knock on the glass once again frightened Linda. Mina tried to reach out to Michael, hoping that he would open the door for her. The guy himself was at a loss as to what she might need. Linda was worried about what would happen if she was seen here like this. In a panic, she began to look around in search of a place where she could hide. She suddenly froze, announcing that she had found a suitable place. With her words, she made the hearts of the two people in the car sink into their heels. Having asked to be covered, she began to climb into the back seats, hoping to hide under them. Michael did not have time to stop her, and the girl finally disappeared from behind. Covering his face with his hand, he began to prepare for what could happen here. His heart was counting down that very moment with a sinking feeling. A couple of seconds later, Mina opened the door, asking what the guy was doing all this time. The girl hoped to use some seduction techniques to get the coveted gun. He looked at her doomedly, saying that now it's all over, there's no point in hiding anything. Mina looked at him blankly, asking what he meant. 
After this, excited voices were heard from behind. Linda was frightened that someone else was hiding here besides her, and Alice was forced to reveal herself so as not to create panic in her friend. Mina was dumbfounded that both girls had been with Michael all this time. A moment later, she called the guy a pervert. They didn't even try to hide what they were doing. The flushed hero slapped her on the head, saying that she had misunderstood the situation. The girl just looked at him in disbelief. The next morning, they moved on. Michael drove while sitting on the truck while the girls were inside. He didn't feel any discomfort from yesterday's situation, but he couldn't say the same about his companions. Linda was still replaying what happened yesterday in her head. She didn't expect to meet Alice there. Mina broke the awkward silence, saying that she had not expected that Michael would have so much strength to cope with two at once. Alice, flushed, said that the girl understood everything wrong. Linda confirmed her words, saying that nothing ever happened between them. Mina said that there was no need to be ashamed of this situation. In their current world, Michael could create his own harem group at any time. After her words, the truck braked sharply. The girl could not stay in her place from such a sharp braking, and she found herself pressed against the glass. Mina told Alice that she shouldn't react so strongly to her words, but the girl pointed somewhere ahead, asking her partner to look in front of her. Mina saw many zombies crowding around huge trucks. Getting out of the car, Linda did not understand why so many undead had gathered here. Alice asked Michael what their plan was. The hero replied that the girls should get back into the car and leave. He felt that something was wrong here. Listening to his words, Linda approached the truck, preparing to climb inside. Suddenly, a steely, enhanced by an aura, flew at them from above. Michael noticed her as she began to approach the unsuspecting Linda. Alice called out to her friend, heading towards her, hoping to save her from the deadly attack. When the girl turned around, the arrow was a few centimeters away from her. She could not do anything because of the horror that gripped her. The hero managed to hit the arrow at the last moment. The next moment, he told the people from the Killer Legion to stop hiding and come out. A couple of seconds later, several people came out of their hiding place. Their commander said that he was very lucky he would have a good catch today. Alice activated her sensory ability, scouting the situation. Then she told Michael that there were only 18 people in the district. The hero grinned, thinking that with such a small number, they decided to pursue him. He said it was very noble of them to come here to help Michael improve his skills. The assassins laughed after his words. The four of them would not be able to defeat an entire guild, especially since their commander was a second level awakened. Michael was inspired after he found out that there was another awakened one here. He said that it would be fun to play with him. The guy's words infuriated Khan. Taking out a dagger, the hero said that he was giving them three chances to shoot him after which he bloodthirstily examined the opponents and said that otherwise they would die. Khan could not understand whether the guy standing in front of him was crazy or just looking for death. Michael replied that it was neither one nor the other, he was giving him a chance to survive. The man was finally convinced that the boy had gone crazy so that he would be given a chance to escape. No one had ever dared to utter such nonsense. The next moment, he drew his bow, preparing to finish off this boy. When the arrow flew at the hero, he said that it was too slow, after which he easily dodged the shot. Khan is surprised that he managed to dodge his arrow so easily. Mina watched this circus with displeasure. She knew that Michael could deal with their leader in one blow, but for some reason, he decided to mess with them. The girl noted that compared to last time, the guy's speed has increased greatly. He is becoming stronger day by day. Meanwhile, Michael announced that the man had only two attempts left. The hero needed to get closer to the enemy in order to get rid of him with one blow, and he did not have time to give a signal to the other members of the Legion. Khan pulled his bow again, preparing to fire four arrows at once. This time the guy would have no way to dodge, but this time Michael avoided all attacks, sliding from side to side with lightning speed. Approaching the enemy, the hero asked if this is really all that a man is capable of. This greatly disappoints him. The guy was trying to piss off the enemy. He asked how someone like him with such mediocre abilities managed to become a commander. Khan's team began to worry that their leader might be defeated by such a strong opponent. After Michael's words, the man finally lost his composure. A moment later, he fired dozens of arrows showing his full strength. The hero did not expect that his opponent would be able to do something like this. 
Clouds of dust covered the place where the boy stood. The members of the Legion thought that he was doomed from the very beginning. It was stupid to resist their commander. Khan had a hard time with this technique. After using it, he stood breathing heavily. He was sure that this time Michael did not have the opportunity to dodge. When the column of dust cleared, everyone expected to see a dead body pierced by arrows, but there was no one there. The next moment, a sharp blade was pointed at the Legion commander's neck. The completely unharmed hero stood behind Khan and smiled. The man turned sharply, causing Michael to jump back. He asked how the guy managed to survive his attack, but the hero kicked him in the stomach, saying that he talks too much, after which he approached the man lying on the ground, saying that all attempts given to him had failed, and now the hero could calmly kill his opponent. Khan asked for mercy. In return, he could tell interesting information about the Legion's troops. Michael was interested in his proposal. Seeing that his proposal was liked by the enemy, the man continued, saying that he could share information about where their main forces were located and also explain why so many undead had gathered here. The Legion commander hoped to stall for time by talking. He planned to quietly sound an alarm, and then the people left in the rear would be here. In this situation, Khan was sure that the boy would not be able to leave here alive. When he finally reached the device and had only to press the button, Michael said that his opponent's right hand was a little restless. After his remark, Khan's heart skipped several beats. He did not understand how the hero managed to notice anything. Taking advantage of the enemy's confusion, the guy threw his dagger at him. A moment later, the man's hand, holding the signaling device, fell limply to the ground. The shocked Khan looked in horror at his severed hand. He was brought out of his state of shock by terribly severe pain. He could not restrain his screams. He barely managed to give the order to his people to immediately return and gather the main forces of the Legion. This guy is too fast and cunning. Meanwhile, Michael turned to Mina, asking if she could deal with these midges together with Alice. The girl indignantly asked why she should fulfill his requests. Not only does he check her, she also evaluates every action of the hero. Having said this, she turned around and was about to return to the truck. The guy replied that if she didn't want to, he wouldn't force her. He just wanted to give her the opportunity to play with his baby. After his words, Mina turned around and, already holding her machine gun at gunpoint, said that she could deal with everyone, even if reinforcements came to the opponents. She was ready to do anything to get the treasure that was promised to her. The explosions, one after another, consumed the members of the Legion, not giving them a chance to escape. Alice, who was watching from the side, said that this girl had so much energy that she could cope without her help. Michael approached Khan, demanding that he tell all the information about the Legion without prevarication. He has many ways to force the truth out of a man. The Legion commander said that he could tell him, but first the guy had to promise that he would let him go alive. In response to his words, Michael plunged a dagger into the ground between his opponent's legs after which the hero gave him a choice. Either Khan tells everything on a voluntary basis, or the guy will gradually rid him of one limb at a time. The threat worked. The terrified man said that they had this new regiment in which there were about a thousand people and more than hundreds of awakened ones. He blocked the bridge to attract the undead, which they were going to use as a sacrifice. The hero had heard a lot about the strength of this army, which was not inferior to their cruelty. He tried to unravel the reason for their presence in the vicinity of the city and for blocking the bridge. His thoughts were interrupted by Khan, who asked if he could leave now. He fulfilled his condition. Without waiting for an answer, the man ran away from the place. He planned to return here, bringing with him the main forces of the Legion to get rid of the guy. Suddenly, a dagger blade pierced his chest. Alice, standing to the side, watched in amazement as the well-thrown weapon overtook its target at an impressive distance. Michael said that his condition did not include a clause about releasing the man alive. He later approached the dead enemy, retrieving his dagger. Suddenly, the hero noticed a green glow emanating from the man's body. Approaching, he took something that resembled a pearl. It was this that emitted this radiance. The next second, the ball burst like a soap bubble. Michael realized that he had fallen into a trap. He immediately informed the girls that they needed to leave here immediately. They were discovered. After his words, they all rushed to the truck. Meanwhile, at the Legion camp, 
Glenn used his ability to check the condition of the commanders of all squads. Suddenly one of the connecting balls burst. He was surprised that the commander of the patrol detachment was defeated. The man knew that Khan was a fairly strong, second-level awakened person. The person who killed him must have incredible abilities. After that, he headed towards the exit of the tent. They had already been sitting in one place for quite a long time. He decided it was time for them to start moving on. Michael and his companions moved in complete silence. Unable to bear it, Mina began to resent the fact that she was sitting in the back while everyone else was sitting in front. The guy asked her to shut up. They could be caught up at any moment. They should be ready for this. All this time he thought that their strength was not enough to withstand the large army. Meanwhile, Linda was thinking about how she could become stronger so as not to become a burden to others. Suddenly, Alice reported that enemy vehicles were approaching them. Michael expected them to catch up, but he didn't think it would happen so quickly. Glenn, who was at the head of the chase, ordered the truck to be caught up. He could not allow those who killed Khan to escape. As he approached, he fired his cannon towards the enemy. Alice warned that a rocket was flying towards them. After her words, Mina climbed onto the truck, saying that as long as she was here, none of the missiles would hit them. After he fired directly at the charge heading towards them, a deafening explosion passed over their heads without causing much damage to either side. The girl said that she has no equal when it comes to guns. In response to her statement, Glenn ordered to fire all the missiles at his command so that the girl could show all her skills. Mina did not like this option for testing her abilities. Raising his hand up, the man gave a permission signal. The girl realized that she could not cope alone with so many missiles. She called Michael for help. The guy responded to her request, joining her on the roof of the truck. He immediately placed an air shield around the bottom. All the missiles crashed against it, causing no damage to Michael and his team. The Legion troops did not understand where the wall came from out of thin air. Glenn ordered no more missiles to be fired. Glenn found the meeting with such a talented guy quite interesting. Getting down from his truck, he told the hero that he managed to interest him. Jumping down, Michael told Mina that they should move forward while he delayed them, otherwise they would not be able to break away from the chase. Having come to his senses, he said that his baby remained in the truck, so their safety fell on Mina's shoulders. The joyful girl said that he should not worry about it and wished him good luck, after which he disappeared into the car. A moment later, the girls drove away safely. Glenn was furious that the girls they could have gotten away from them just got away from them, and he demanded that the hero bring them back immediately. The subordinate men said that they would take care of this and bring the beauties in the near future. Michael couldn't let that happen. He used the air wall again, blocking the Legion squad's path. A moment later, explosions followed, indicating an unsuccessful collision of the trucks with an obstacle. The men realized that until they got rid of Michael, they would not be able to break through this wall. Using this technique for the second time in a row has significantly exhausted the hero. It will be difficult for him to face such a crowd alone. His condition was not lost on Glenn, who asked whether the boy was strong enough to survive. Michael replied that he had enough remaining strength to deal with someone like them. After that, he drew a line between them. Pointing the dagger at the man, he said that whoever crosses this line will die immediately. Lighting a cigar, Glenn said that it sounded creepy, after which he said that his guys could have a little fun with this guy. The man understood that the guy was not so simple. He planned to exhaust him and then find out the necessary information. The squad members who received the instructions were serious about killing their enemy. When the men approached the drawn line, he pulled out two daggers, saying that the extermination was beginning. The next moment, he slid between them with lightning speed, getting rid of each one. Not even ten seconds had passed before the guy stood, looking around at the lying bodies behind him. Michael stood opposite Glenn, saying that if there were people who wanted to die, he was waiting for them. The man was amazed at how fast this guy was moving. The remaining members of the squad decided to shoot at the enemy from afar. Approaching him on their own was akin to suicide. A few moments later, countless projectiles were flying towards Michael. He stood motionless. He asked if they seriously thought they could stop him in this way. The guy easily dodged all the bombs. One of the shooters told everyone to move back, increasing the distance between them and the enemy. But unfortunately for them, Michael was next to them in a matter of seconds. One of the men decided to take advantage of the fact that the hero was dealing with his comrades and shot the guy. 
This attempt did not go unnoticed by Michael. He repeated that such weapons were completely useless against him, after which he threw the dagger at the bomb. Immediately after this, there was an explosion. The man who shot was unlucky and was hit hard. Glenn calmly watched what was happening when the burnt body of a subordinate fell near him. He was right. This guy has incredible abilities. There is only one way to deal with him. Left alone with Glenn, Michael said that it was his turn. The man recognized his strength, inviting the guy to join him, promising to close his eyes to what happened here. He wanted to hold out for time until the seeds planted in his subordinates ripened in order to get rid of the guy. Michael refused the offer, carefully watching his opponent's every move. After that, the man used his technique. Plant stems began to emerge from the bodies of slain Legion members. The hero was shocked by such a sight. He rushed towards the enemy, cutting his way through. Glenn decided not to hesitate and used the grappling technique, after which dozens of stems reached out to the guy. He should not have had a chance against this technique. Glenn was confident that Michael would not be able to dodge this technique. The hero said that his opponent greatly underestimated his abilities. The next second, he used the protective wind barrier, throwing the stems to the sides. Even though Michael's strength was running low, he couldn't afford to die here. Glenn froze in amazement as he watched the boy's barrier surround them. He tried to call his plants inside, but he could not do it. Observing the man's futile attempts, Michael said that his barrier not only repels attacks, but also forms a cage that is capable of isolating the man from his plants. The hero said that his opponent's fate was sealed. Glenn couldn't believe what the guy told him and summoned his plants again. But he failed again. His plants could not get inside. The man began to lose his temper, realizing the situation in which he found himself. He missed the moment when Michael struck him. From the cutting pain, the man fell to his knees, clutching his wound. The hero repeated that on his territory, all the man's efforts were in vain. Glenn replied that the boy couldn't kill him. He explained that if Michael got rid of him, then all his girlfriends would go to hell with him. The hero said that the man's bluff won't work on him because the girls are safe. Glenn replied that he sent his men in pursuit, and he himself wanted to detain the guy. His subordinates would easily catch them. Michael replied with a smile that these girls were much stronger than his opponent thought. Meanwhile, a few kilometers from the site of Michael's battle, the truck was surrounded by many craters. The girls managed to fight off their pursuers. Mina was terribly happy to have such an opportunity to have fun. Dissatisfied, Alice called out to her friend through the window to stop laughing throughout the neighborhood. The girl said that two more opponents were hiding behind the rock to their left. After Mina dealt with them, the girls could go to Michael. The men hiding nearby heard the girls talking. One of them told his partner to call their leader and ask for help. They waited several seconds until the connection was established. Mina, who was watching them, could not help but smile in anticipation. She decided to reveal herself, saying that they were caught. The shocked men said that they were just passing by here. Their heartbreaking screams could be heard throughout the area. Glenn froze for a moment, listening to the sounds from the walkie-talkie. When screams were heard from there, he told the guy that he could listen to the dying screams of his companions. His words were interrupted by a voice from the walkie-talkie, which reported that all their people were dead, immediately after which the screams began again. Glenn was stunned by what he had just heard. Michael, standing in front of him, smiling, said that these screams were like a delight to his ears. The man brought the walkie-talkie to his face, asking what was going on there. The hero knocked it out of the enemy's hands, holding a dagger to Glenn's neck, saying that now nothing will stop him from getting rid of it. The man asked the guy not to kill him. In return, he would tell everything about the Legion. He heard that someone from the top had entered into a conspiracy with the city of M and wanted to block the bridge. Michael said Glenn should only tell him the truth. He assured the guy that this was true, before being sent here, he personally saw a man in black enter the office of their leader. It was definitely the manager of the city of M, and they said something about salt and driven pigs. After listening to him, the hero asked in what sense the word pigs was used, and how it was related to salt, because salt was always in abundance there, and prices were stable. Suddenly a cloud of dust appeared in the distance, from where the calls of the main character could be heard. Linda, looking out of the window, shouted that they had finally returned and asked if he was injured. The hero replied that he was fine. Noticing that his opponent was distracted, Glenn took the opportunity to attack him. Seeing this, Linda warned the guy about the danger. Michael grabbed the blade of the dagger with his hand, asking if all members of the Legion use such base methods. Glenn was surprised that the guy managed to block his attack. After that, the guy cut the enemy's throat with his dagger. The man could not believe that he would die here in this way. 
He wanted to say something but did not have time and fell to the ground dead. The girls who got out of the truck approached and asked if Michael had any wounds. The hero replied that he was fine, but he had to put in a lot of effort to defeat Glenn. Kicking the man's corpse, Mina asked the guy what he intended to do next. She said that despite his death, other members of the Legion were still hiding somewhere nearby, and if they started crossing the bridge, they could fall into a trap. Michael replied that he was not one to give up halfway. He has already dealt with the leaders of the group sent, and he can easily deal with others too. Concerned, Linda asked what he was going to do. The guy called the girls and began to explain his plan. A few hours later, most of the Legion groups returned to the main camp. A man who approached one of the trucks asked where they managed to bring so many girls. The man driving the car replied that he had stumbled upon them while he was out shopping for supplies. Afterwards, Steve asked, out of old friendship, to give him one of the girls. Robin replied that without the permission of their leader, he would not do anything that could endanger his life. Then he drove on, leaving a dissatisfied Steve alone. He sighed heavily, wondering where their leader had disappeared. At the same time, Michael was hiding nearby, wondering how he could get inside. He looked at the previously tied up zombie lying nearby, hoping that his little trick would work. A moment later, the hero peeled off the zombie's mouth. He immediately started growling. The patrolman standing around the perimeter could not help but hear this sound. Robin, who was inside the camp, also heard this. He was annoyed because he had previously been notified that all the infected had been exterminated. Afterwards, he told his subordinates to deal with the zombies as quickly as possible because the camp was about to close. The men immediately rushed to carry out the order. A few minutes later, they found a tied-up zombie. One of them suspected that something was wrong here and suggested returning. Suddenly, Michael's blades were pointed at their necks. The hero apologized to them for the fact that they would no longer be able to return to the camp. After these words, he immediately cut their throats. Robin was attracted by a noise nearby and asked what his subordinates were doing all this time. From behind the mountain, they told him that it was too dark here and Tim had been bitten. They needed his help. Robin decided that his subordinate could no longer be saved and told the guy to deal with the zombies and his bitten partner himself. He himself returned back to camp. Michael made sure that the people from the Legion had dropped all vigilance. Noticing the approaching figures, he threw the cloak over the body of the dead man. After he came out of his hiding place pretending to be wounded, the hero said that everyone was killed. Steve approached and was unhappy that they had lost a man to eliminate only one zombie. He told a guy passing by to go wash himself as quickly as possible because he smelled of blood a kilometer away. Michael did not expect that he would be able to deceive these people so easily. A few moments later, the gate to the camp was closed. Dissatisfied, Robin walked out to the group of guys. He said that not so long ago their people were killed by a female killer. If anything else happens today, the leader will rip off their heads. His subordinates assured him that there was no reason to worry because that woman would not be able to get here. Even if she gets inside, she will fall into a trap. Michael walked slowly, trying to hear as many details as possible. He was interested in the woman about whom the conversation was taking place. He assumed that someone else wanted to destroy the Legion. Meanwhile, one girl watched the camp from a safe distance. She was angry that members of the Legion had kidnapped her friends. The girls who approached her said that everything was ready for their plan. Sometime later, another blonde girl watched the camp. She finally managed to find this place and now nothing can stop her. At some point, she decided that there was no point in waiting anymore and pushed off from the surface on which she was standing. She flew down with the intention of killing all members of the Legion. At the same time, not far from the camp, three people made a halt. Mina was unhappy that Michael was messing around with the Legion for so long. Alice replied that he said that they could begin the main actions after the fire started in the camp. They just had to wait for the signal. Linda, who was unloading the car, supported Alice saying that Michael was taking a lot of risks. So in order not to waste time later, they needed to prepare one necessary thing. In her hands was a box of explosives. After her words, Mina stood up from her seat, saying that she would help her. The girl was excited about the upcoming fireworks display. At this time, the hero walked around the camp exploring everything here. Suddenly, he noticed one guarded tent and decided that this was exactly what he needed. He was sure that the most interesting things would begin in the second half of the night. His thoughts were interrupted by voices coming from the tent behind him. After listening, he made out female voices discussing some kind of plan. Meanwhile, the girls captured earlier tried to escape. One of them managed to get a piece of glass with which she could cut the ropes binding her hands. The other girls hurried her because their salvation depended only on Layla. A few agonizingly long seconds later, she said the rope was about to break. And the next moment the rope actually broke. Immediately after this, 
the girl began to free others. At the same moment, Michael approached the entrance, pushing aside the fabric. For a couple of seconds, he froze at the entrance. Linda noticed someone's presence and turned in horror towards the entrance. The other girls began to crawl towards the wall, screaming, and the Legion members noticed them trying to escape. They shouted for Layla to leave them and run away on her own. The stunned hero said that they had understood everything wrong. The girl squeezed the shard more tightly in her hand, ready to fight with it. Noticing Layla's mood, the guy put his palm out in front of him, trying to explain to her that he was not going to harm them. But the girl heard nothing and rushed at him, screaming for him to die. He didn't dodge the glass tip because he didn't think the girl would seriously decide to do it. Michael grabbed her hand with the fragment. In surprise, she dropped her weapon, but the guy said that he was not from the Legion and was not going to harm them. Layla did not believe his words and said that no matter how much he took her for a fool, there was no one except members of the Legion to appear here in the dead of night. She tried to attack him again. The hero had to jump back to dodge. He said that since they did not take his word for it, he would have to prove it in another way. The next moment, he jumped out of his seat. Approaching her, the guy said that the best way to do this would be to convince the girl using physical force. The other girls watched the commotion in silence. At some point, they were dumbfounded from shock by the picture unfolding in front of them. Michael tied Layla up and slapping her on the hips, said that if he were from the Legion, he would have killed her long ago. The spankings became more painful each time. The flushed girl demanded that he let her go. The girls, sitting at a distance, agreed that this man really did not look like someone from the Legion and assumed that May had sent him. When the guy stood up, the girls froze in anticipation of his next actions. Rising, Michael asked Layla if she believed him. She replied that she believed. Despite her outward calm, rage raged inside her. She would never forgive this guy for treating her in such a shameless manner. After her words, he bent down, untying the ropes, simultaneously saying that if she wanted to get out of here, she should listen to him. A man from the Legion came in response to the noise. Without speaking, the hero froze in horror, realizing that their affairs were bad. Layla shared the guy's horror. He pulled up the hood of his cloak, telling girls not to do anything rash. Then he stood up and walked towards Steve who had arrived, asking what was going on. Layla turned around after him, wondering what this guy was up to. The man whom Michael had seen earlier asked what he was doing here and covering his nose reminded him that the guy had been ordered to wash himself first. The hero said that he was about to go to the shower when he heard strange sounds from here. So he decided to go in and check, after which he stretched out the rope and added that he discovered that one of the girls was preparing to escape. Then he pointed to Layla and said that he was going to tie her up again, which is exactly what he was caught doing. Steve praised the guy. He then turned his attention to the girl, saying that when their boss returned, he would deal with her first. Leaning towards the man, Michael said that it was unknown when their leader would return and suggested that they themselves have fun with her until that time, after which they would say that the girl was accidentally killed during an escape attempt. He seriously thought about the hero's words. When Layla heard this, she thought that the guy had deceived her after all. After weighing all the pros and cons, the smiling man said that the boy's words made sense. After that, Steve headed towards the tied-up girl. The hero was glad that Steve took his hook. Stopping in front of the girl and smiling smugly, he said that very soon she would personally recognize all his skills. With a smile, she looked behind him and asked if he wanted to try out his friend's skills on himself. After her words, Steve turned back in confusion. At the same moment, Michael put the blade of a dagger to his neck, asking what, in his opinion, was stronger, the guy's knife or the man's neck. Without waiting for an answer, the hero cut his neck. The girls watched in amazement as the dead body of one of the Legion members fell in front of them. After that, he again began to untie Layla's ropes, telling them to wait here. As soon as they heard the explosion, they should immediately rush to the exit. Once free, she asked if his main reason for getting here was to save them. Handing her a pistol, the hero replied that the Legion had started an unequal game with him, and he was obliged to put them in their place. Then he turned around and headed for the exit, saying goodbye that if she got into trouble again, he would not save her. The girl snorted in embarrassment, answering that she did not need his help in the future. Immediately after that, she began to untie the other girls, listening to how heroic the act of the departed guy was. When Layla asked whose side they were on, the dark-haired girl replied that naturally, they would be on the side of their savior. Every now and then she was distracted from their conversations, thinking about whether the hero would succeed, because there were more than a thousand people in the camp. At the same time, two men were patrolling the camp area. They both argued about which of them was more tired. When steps were heard nearby, the men perked up and began to peer towards the stranger, 
asking who was there. Michael approached and told them the false name of their comrade-in-arms, whom he had killed earlier. Having complained about the burden of carrying out the night watch, he took out a pack of cigarettes, asking if anyone had a lighter. The men also asked him for one when he mentioned that cigarettes help ward off drowsiness. And then a couple of seconds later, his request was fulfilled. The man holding the lighter said that the hero was more handsome than before. Grinning, Michael replied that he had always been handsome. When the man realized that there was a stranger among them, he became furious. But he didn't have time to do anything. The guy cut their necks with lightning speed. Looking around, he was pleased with the work. His plan was approaching the most interesting part. Surrounded a few meters away from him were a dozen dead bodies. Sometime later, he approached the gate, on which there were two guards. The hero only had to get rid of them so that others could freely enter inside. Michael approached them using the same script, asking for a lighter. It seemed strange to him that they did not react to him in any way, and he came close to one of them. The guy realized that they were dead when the bodies collapsed to the ground and a pool of blood began to appear near them. As he examined the body, he realized that he was not the only one who had gotten inside. Suddenly a girl appeared behind him. Approaching him, she told him to be silent. Then she put a knife to his throat, adding that if he started playing tricks, he would die immediately. Without removing the blade, Alicia told him to turn to face her. Michael complied with her request and, raising his hands in a sign of reconciliation, asked who she was. He noted that the girl was very smart and careful because he did not even notice her approach. Alicia replied that first the guy should tell her his name. He asked why on earth he should do this. She looked at him for a few seconds. Then she moved behind him, aiming at his neck, saying that his life was in her hands. But the hero managed to protect his body before the blade pierced his neck and with a smile asked why such thoughts suddenly settled in her head. Noticing the girl's stupor, he jumped away from her to a safe distance. She asked in confusion what awakened ability he had that allowed him to block her attack. Michael replied that this information was of absolutely no use to her, after which he attacked the girl. Alicia dodged his blade, jumping back. Once at a safe distance, she said that they would definitely see each other next time. Immediately after these words, the girl disappeared in a cloud of smoke. Michael reminded himself that his main task was to destroy the camp, so there was no point in chasing after her. He straightened his cloak and turned in a different direction. A few seconds later, an explosion was heard behind him, through which the guy heard the voice of Alicia, who left him such a bright farewell gift. The hero covered his face with his sleeve so as not to inhale smoke. Everyone in the camp perked up and raised the alarm. Michael immediately contacted the girls, saying that he had been found out and they needed to move to Plan B, after which he instructed them to run into an ambush in advance, and he would lure them there. Alice listened to him and agreed to the new plan. Having ended the conversation, she reported the information she had received to the others. Mina laughed happily, glad that it was finally time for her rocket launcher, which she had received from Michael. Having collected everything they needed, the girls headed to their truck. The hero was running at full speed at that time, leading his pursuers into a trap. Sometime later, he contacted Alice again, asking if everything was ready. She confirmed their readiness and said that there was no reason to worry. Mina was already looking forward to using her favorite rocket launcher. Linda at that moment worried about the hero, praying that he would not get hurt. A minute later, Michael contacted them again, saying they could get started. As soon as their targets appeared in sight, the girls began active combat operations, getting rid of their enemies. One of the guys turned around to warn that there were snipers and they needed to retreat. Smiling, Mina said that there are not only snipers here. Then she launched a projectile from her baby towards them. The next second, there was a deafening explosion. Michael, who watched this, said that if there is no law in this world, then he himself will become one. It is he who will decide what is right and what is wrong. After some time, the hero walked among dead bodies and small craters left by Mina's weapons. He stopped, distracted by a noise next to him. The happy girl lovingly hugged the rocket launcher, saying that the weapon they were given was the best. On the other hand, Linda approached him and asked if everything was okay with him. He replied that he was fine. Their conversation was interrupted by Alice, reporting that the two managed to escape. Michael replied that they shouldn't worry about it because someone else would take care of them. His words were drowned out by an explosion ahead that caught their attention. Alice watched with confusion, trying to figure out who it could be. Seeing the familiar figure of a girl leading the rescued hostages, the hero told his friend that they were not enemies. Moving closer, Layla thanked the guy for his help earlier and introduced herself, extending her hand in a friendly gesture. Michael nodded and turned around, telling Alice that they needed to get out of here. Layla watched the retreating figures for several seconds. Recovering from her shock, she called out to them. 
The guy turned around and asked what she needed. The girl started from afar, saying that they had just experienced such horrors and added that a crowd of zombies, attracted by the explosions, would probably soon arrive here. He asked, looking bored, why he should care about her fears. With an embarrassed face, Layla replied that they were all weak girls and asked if they could stay together with Michael. Rubbing his chin, he asked if she meant that he should take them under his protection. The girl replied that it was only for one night, and at dawn they would leave immediately. The hero shook his head from side to side, saying that he did not agree with her proposal. The girl looked at him in surprise. She expected a completely different answer. Her friends rushed to Layla's defense, accusing the guy of all sorts of sins. Grinning, he asked if the girls really wanted the hero to become their bodyguard for free. The girl was embarrassed again and asked what he wanted in return. Michael said that he had two options, the first of which was that they would go their separate ways and take care of themselves. The second was that the girls would join his team and he would become their boss. Layla once again looked at him in surprise. She assumed that he would ask her to sleep with him. A girl from the crowd noted that there are only four people on his team now, which makes it even more miserable, and asked if he would definitely cope with everything if they joined him. Michael replied that he and his friends had just destroyed this camp, while the girls were hostages in this camp. In his opinion, this was a fairly weighty argument. The others fell silent, admitting he was right. Suddenly, a girl appeared and said that combat power is really important, but there is one more important detail. May asked if the guy could feed them all. The other girls immediately ran up to her, showing how happy they were to see her. Holding Layla, she said that she was just heading to the camp to save them, but someone had already gotten ahead of her. Michael asked the new arrival who she was. Layla grabbed May's hand and replied that she was their sworn sister, the one they had always followed before. The hero looked at the group of girls appraisingly. He noticed that the overall strength of their group was quite good, and if he forced them to join him, then his work in the future would become much easier. Breaking him out of his thoughts, May repeated her question of how exactly he was going to feed them all. After listening to her, the hero snapped the fingers of the hand on which his spatial ring was. Michael replied that it would not be difficult for him. At the same moment, many boxes with supplies began to appear on the ground. The girls looked at what was happening with a different range of emotions, from sincere joy to deep shock and disbelief. It was the first time in a long time that they had seen so much variety of food. The girls looked up from the boxes of supplies and stared at Michael. A couple of seconds later, he decided that this was enough and said that they had seen everything. And now it was up to them to decide whether to stay or leave. May looked in surprise at the Snickers handed to her, thinking about everything. A girl approached her and offered to agree to the guy's proposal and join his team. The others immediately supported her, trying in every possible way to convince May. When she could no longer stand among this noise, the girl shouted for everyone to be silent. As soon as her request was fulfilled, she pointed to Michael, stipulating that in addition to all these supplies, each of them should receive a thousand cartridges every day. He replied that he was ready to give them two thousand rounds of ammunition, but they must obey him unquestioningly, otherwise he would kick them out. As for supplies, he can guarantee that he will provide them with salt for every meal. The girls will have to work hard to get the rest. May liked his conditions and agreed to join him, because not every bell is ready to provide the opportunity to consume salt during every meal. The girls watched with joy as the two leaders shook hands to seal the deal. Some couldn't help but cry with happiness that they no longer had to worry about food and salt. May said that from that point on, the relationship between them was employer and employee, but she warned him not to even think about using any of them for any other purposes of his own. Michael grabbed the girl by the neck and said threateningly, that the first thing she should remember is to never talk to him in such a tone. He advised her, instead of worrying about him forcing them to do anything, to observe their behavior and not let them slip inside his tent. May angrily replied that no one on her team would ever do that. Contrary to her words, the girls began to surround him one by one. One of them pressed close to him and asked what kind of girls he was interested in. Even if he already had a girlfriend, she wouldn't mind becoming another one. May, watching this, tried with all her might to maintain at least a shred of self-control. But rage completely overtook her, and she began shouting at the girls, trying to reason with them. Layla approached her and said that she would give them a little freedom. Given the state of things in the changing world, it is unknown how long they will be able to live. May sighed heavily, hoping that she would not regret her decision in the future. The next day, they set up their camp. Linda informed the hero that all supplies had been counted. She then held out her hand with the colorful crystals she had found among the supplies. Michael took one of them, saying that they were full of strong energy, and some of them could even be directly converted into water. 
Linda said that she had heard that if an ordinary person absorbed some of the energy from it, they could become awakened. Having said this, she asked if she too could become awakened with the help of the crystal. The hero shook his head and replied that the crystals that Linda was holding did not have pure energy and could harm her body, and they should wait a little. The girl lowered her head in disappointment. Michael patted her head soothingly, telling her not to be upset. Afterwards, he said that he would help her become awakened as soon as he found a suitable crystal. Smiling, she replied that she believed him. At that moment, May appeared and said that everyone had already gathered and was waiting for his orders. A moment later, the others appeared behind her and unanimously said that they were ready to carry out any order. Smiling, he told them to be ready to hear his first order. Afterwards, he ordered them to eat well and rest. They clearly didn't expect something like this. But a moment later, the girls were already joyfully shouting praises to their new commander. After some time, everyone was actively preparing food. The girls were looking forward to the moment when they could finally eat delicious food. A dispute flared up between them about what exactly this porridge was made from. A little later, Linda approached them, saying that everything should be ready and they could start eating. After her words, they happily grabbed their plates. One of them nervously touched the lid, slowly removing it. Everyone looked inside at the same time to find out what was inside. They were very surprised when they saw real steamed rice in the pan. The girls almost cried with happiness, because only the mayor of the city could have such a diet. They haven't eaten something like this since before the apocalypse began. The girls threw their plates aside, grabbing the porridge straight from the pan. Linda came up and said that they shouldn't be in such a hurry because now they would bring more dishes and there would be enough food for everyone. One of them looked up from the pan and asked what dishes we were talking about. Smiling, Linda replied that it would definitely be something delicious. The girls began to wonder what it could be. A few minutes later, Mina and Alice appeared, carrying another huge pot of food. Approaching the others, they stopped and finally put the food on the ground. Alice took off the lid, saying that it was boiled cabbage with spices. The girls were surprised that Michael allowed something expensive to be used as spices for them. They hesitated as they looked inside. Mina asked in confusion what they were waiting for because if the food cools down, it won't be as tasty. After her words, the girls lined up to get their portion of this dish. For Claudia, this dish reminded her of her mother, who loved to cook cabbage rolls with peppers. She barely managed to hold back tears when she spoke about the tragic death of her mother. The other girls looked at her with sympathy. Linda, who was listening, also had tears in her eyes, realizing how much this poor girl had to go through. She couldn't help herself and hugged Claudia, trying to console her. The girl said that from now on they are her new family. Michael, at this time, was watching the camp while sitting near the mountain a little further away, holding a cigarette in his hands. He wondered when the apocalypse would finally end. Several hours later, they arrived again at a bridge overrun with zombies. The hero said that their first goal is to destroy the zombies on this bridge and pass through it. After his words, the girls seemed excited. They were worried because there were so many enemies and it would be very difficult to fight in such an area. Layla approached and said that they would carry out his order. Deep down, she was sure that it would not be difficult to complete this task together with Michael, who single-handedly dealt with the entire camp. Contrary to her expectations, he said that this time he and the rest of his old group would not participate in the battle, and they would have to deal with all the zombies on their own. The girl looked at him uncertainly and asked the reason for his decision, because if he wasn't there, they wouldn't be able to cope with everyone. Michael didn't let her finish and said that he just wants to see how strong they are without him. He had already given what he promised them. Now it's their turn to prove their worth to him. As he walked past Layla, he continued, saying that if they couldn't even handle that, then there was no point in him keeping the trash around. The girl asked in confusion how he could say such things about them. May, who was standing nearby, interrupted her, saying that Michael was completely right and she shouldn't be hysterical about it. She reminded her that there is no free lunch and everything has a price. Layla sadly lowered her eyes, explaining that the guy's words sounded too rude, and because of this she could not restrain herself. May tapped her on the shoulder and told her that he was a boss who paid her money for what she did, and she shouldn't care how he treated her. Then she shouted that it was just a bunch of dead people that they could easily deal with. Her motivational speech had an effect, and everyone was now filled with determination to go into battle. The girl then pointed to the approaching crowd, telling everyone to follow her. Linda worriedly asked Alice if everything would be all right with these girls. She replied that they did not have much fighting power and there was a possibility of injury or even death. Michael, standing to the side, took out another cigarette. Inhaling tobacco smoke, he said that in this world it is impossible not to suffer and not die, so it is better to taste the taste of suffering now than to suffer later. 
when the entire squad is completely destroyed. Mina, like the guy, lit a cigarette standing next to him and said that he was completely right. This is a world in which countless people die every day. Michael stared at the girl in bewilderment, dropping his cigarette somewhere on the ground. Having come to his senses, he snatched the cigarette from her mouth and said that children should not smoke and she should not copy his bad habits. Mina was angry that he called her a child again. Meanwhile, the girls were actively fighting the monsters. Shots and explosions were heard everywhere. Layla confidently dealt with her enemies, keeping May's words in her head. Michael watched the efforts of his charges from above. May commanded her group to prepare grenades and throw them at the zombies on the front line. They couldn't afford for the zombies to gather together. Linda and Alice, who were watching with him, noticed that there were no losses among them yet and no one was injured. The hero agreed with their words, saying that they were actually doing a good job. At the same time, the giant zombie violently threw all those attacking him in different directions. Layla watched this in horror. A moment later, he rushed towards them. The girl froze in panic. She realized that if they did not do anything, a terrible end awaited them. May was amazed to see a mutant zombie here. At some point, he froze and let out a terrifying roar. Then he took off from the ground with lightning speed, disappearing from the place where he was a second ago. The zombie was intent on attacking its victims. When he hit the ground a few meters from the hidden group of girls, all the standing cars were thrown in different directions by a powerful stream of wind. The girls also failed to stay on their feet and were thrown back several meters. When it finally stopped, May pulled out a gun, saying that they should all shoot together to kill him. The next moment, everyone opened fire on her orders. The zombie covered his head with his hands, hiding from the bullets. Michael calmly watched this picture. Linda began to worry about the girls. It was obvious that they would not be able to contain the mutant zombie. Mina, who decided not to miss such a great opportunity, took out her baby and said that she could deal with the mutant with just a couple of shots. But the hero stopped her, causing her great displeasure. He explained that explosions from her rocket launcher could cause the bridge to collapse. Alice asked if the guy was going to help them, but he replied that no. He wanted to see how things would go. Michael reminded her that May was also an awakened one. He was waiting for her to finally show what she was truly capable of. At the same time, Layla approached May and reported that the zombie's defenses were too strong and they could not stop him without proper fire support. After listening to her, the girl replied that she would personally deal with this monster. After that, she stepped forward and activated her awakening ability, strengthening her body with the help of the Earth. She said that the others could take care of other zombies for now, after which May rushed at the enemy. The mutant zombie put his fist forward to strike. The next moment, their fists collided. From the clash of their forces, strong gusts of wind spread in all directions. When everything calmed down, the zombie stood in a deep crater, and the girl jumped away from him to a safe distance. She was forced to admit that the monster was too strong. Without giving her a chance to rest, the mutant attacked her again. May had no choice but to gather her last strength in her fist to deflect the blow. The moment their fists met, streams of wind emanated from them again, demolishing everything in their path. But at some point, the zombies prevailed. May flew back several meters. Her blows did only a small amount of damage to the zombies. When the dust began to settle to the ground, a girl appeared trembling with fatigue and pain. She coughed up blood for a few seconds. May did not understand why this mutant had such a strong gap in strength with ordinary zombies. The enemy once again swung at her. Layla watched such a terrible scene with a sinking heart. Linda also began to worry a lot about May. Michael rushed out of his seat to save the girl from imminent death. A couple of moments later, clouds of dust rose again from the zombie's impact. The entire view to the bridge was hidden. When Layla heard someone's suggestion about May's possible death, she, without holding back her emotions, began screaming for them to shut up. Other girls tried to stop her as she, armed with a grenade, headed towards the battle site to save her commander. When a silhouette appeared from the dust, one of the girls pointed in that direction, saying that May had survived. Michael made it in time and was now holding the exhausted girl in his arms. She asked why he was here because he said that he was not going to help them. The guy replied that he was worried that the bridge might collapse if they continued to fight like this. The girls breathed a sigh of relief when they noticed their commander in Michael's arms. Linda also calmed down. She was sure that if the hero was there, then there should be no problems. The mutant roared in rage. A moment later, he attacked his victim again. Michael managed to jump away from the powerful fist of his opponent. He landed on the ground a few meters away from the mutant after a few seconds. The hero released May when they were relatively safe. Afterwards, he told the other girls to take care of the victim while he personally dealt with this zombie. May grabbed his arm, stopping him. The girls who surrounded the guy began to dissuade him from such a rash idea. The hero stepped forward, saying that he was not going to waste his time here. 
He intended to cross this bridge today, and nothing would stop him. Michael fearlessly rushed forward, and the zombie, in turn, swung his fist at his target again. The hero was serious, and having activated his abilities, he prepared for the attack. The next moment, cutting gusts of wind flew from his blades. The mutant zombie could not withstand such a powerful attack, and was seriously injured. Unable to do anything, he flew several meters in the air. After that, he fell face down on the ground. Michael returned to the girls, saying that the zombie had been eliminated, and the girls just had to deal with the small zombies as quickly as possible. They were amazed that May almost died in a fight with this mutant, but he could not withstand even one blow from Michael. The girl thought that the only thing that distinguished her from this guy was a smaller amount of resources. She realized that she was very mistaken. There was simply an insurmountable gap between their combat skills. When the hero noticed that the girls did not even move after his order, he asked why they were still here when they were ordered to immediately get rid of the remaining enemies. Layla was the first to pull herself together and took further command, leading the girls with her. Shooting resumed on the bridge again. Gradually, the zombie corpses became more and more numerous. Michael, who returned to the role of observer, told the girls to scatter the corpses among the cars so that nothing would interfere with their passage. As he lit another cigarette, he thought that after they crossed this bridge, they would need to travel several hundred kilometers more to finally get to the research laboratory. May approached him and apologetically said that they had not coped with the task assigned to him, and if he wanted to terminate their contract, she would not object. Smiling, he handed the girl a piece of paper with content unknown to her. Taking the paper in her hands, May asked if this was confirmation of the end of their cooperation. But when she read the 10-year employment contract offered to her, she froze in amazement with tears in her eyes. She asked why he offered them something like that. Michael replied that they passed his test. A few hours later, the sun began to sink lower and lower above the horizon. Zombies were scurrying around the city. They stubbornly moved towards their victims. As soon as Michael's team stumbled upon them, bullets immediately began to rain from the pistols. The truck raced through the streets, destroying zombies one by one. In another part of the city, zombie bodies were also actively falling to the ground. As soon as this place was protected, they headed to the collection point. Upon returning, May told Layla to take a couple of people with her and carefully inspect this city and make sure that there would be no more monsters here, after which she should send several to stand guard over the city. After listening to the order of her commander, the girl said that she would carry out everything and went to gather people. Immediately after this, she told Michael that they had made great progress and were now literally several thousand kilometers from the city of N. She wondered where they were going to and what they would do if they encountered a large group of zombies again. The guy, studying the map, replied that they would find out when the time came. After answering her question, he asked her to gather everyone after dinner. He wanted to say something. May was annoyed by his attitude. Linda, who noticed the girl's condition, approached her, saying that she should not worry, because Michael is not one of those who achieves his goal at the cost of the lives of his team members. May sighed heavily after her words. She said that she is worried that because they move long distances, the risk of encountering all sorts of danger becomes higher. The hero returned to the truck. He thought that after passing this city, they would reach the Tiger Village, after which they would finally get to the research laboratory. The guy was worried that there were more than a thousand zombies and several dozen mutant zombies on the pass in front of the village. It was there that he had lost a good half of his elite soldiers in the past. Throwing his head back, he decided he needed to find another way. Suddenly, there was a noise outside. Layla, who had been sent on reconnaissance missions, came running back shouting that she had urgent news. Worried, May asked what happened. The girl began to say that they noticed a large group of zombies not far from the city. Their total number was more than 20,000, which included mutant zombies. May was shocked by what she heard and said that she would immediately inform Michael about this, but he was already approaching them, telling her that he was already aware of everything that was happening. The hero did not understand why the number of zombies increased so sharply, especially since in his past, they were much further from this city. May said that it was too dangerous here and they urgently needed to find another place to rest. The hero replied that they could leave today, but return here tomorrow. He intended to get to the right place, breaking through all this crowd. The girls looked at him in horror after he said this. May asked if he was joking, because there are thousands of zombies there that they definitely won't be able to deal with and will simply die. Michael looked at her warningly, asking who was in charge here. She said that she knows that he is the boss here, but this does not give him the right to send them to certain death. 
Alice approached the guy and tried to calm him down, saying that May had simply succumbed to her emotions. Mina supported her, asking her not to be angry with this girl. He glared at May for a few seconds before saying that this was the last time he would show her mercy. But if she dares to contradict him again, the guy promised to strip her naked and hang her up by her arms and begin to beat her. Resigned to the fact that they could not avoid meeting zombies, she asked him what his plan was, saying that there were too few of them for something like that, and their cars would be destroyed by zombies. He took out a rolled up sheet of paper and said that he was confident in what he was doing. Then he handed the paper to May, saying that they need to convert the machines according to this drawing, after which the zombies will not be able to stop them. The girl doubtfully unfolded the drawing. However, when she saw the contents, she was very surprised. The girls could not even imagine that it was possible to convert their cars in such a way. They looked at Michael with admiration, asking where he got these drawings. The guy replied that this is not so important. Now they need to prepare materials and begin re-equipment. May said that these blueprints are really good. They can even transform the truck discovered a few days ago and use it as a vanguard. After a pause, she continued, saying that the truck driver would be in great danger. Michael nodded, confirming her train of thought, which was exactly what he wanted to tell them. The hero said that he needed a fearless warrior who would clear the road with an updated truck. Panic began to arise among the girls. They were fully aware of the danger looming over them. May stood on the sidelines, weighing the pros and cons. A moment later, she shouted for everyone to be quiet. She stepped forward, saying that those who undermine the morale of the entire squad will be expelled immediately. The hero who watched this thought that although she sometimes contradicts him, at such moments she can be very useful. The girl offered to become a truck driver herself, but the guy replied that she was a combat commander, and if she became a driver, they would suffer losses. May tried to object, but Layla beat her to it, offering her candidacy for the driver's seat. The commander immediately objected, explaining that the girl was not that strong in battle, and if she was surrounded by zombies, she would not even be able to defend herself. Layla argued that her driving skill is the best in the squad. Michael watched their argument. When his patience began to reach a critical minimum, he intervened, trying to calm the girls down. He said that Layla would be the one to drive the truck. He would help clear the way by sitting on the roof of the vehicle, and May would be in charge of coordinating the fighting. Then he took out the crystals, saying that he would give them to the driver as a reward. If she died in battle, he would give an additional five crystals to those whom she named now. But the girl refused, saying that there was no need for this. If he had not saved her that day, she would have been dead long ago. Michael did not listen to the end of her revelation and simply handed her the crystals. The other girls were amazed that he would give something like that as a reward. Hearing their conversations, the hero said that he would not allow his team members to die in vain, but they must work off everything he gives them as a reward. Those who want to get something for nothing can immediately leave his squad. He offered them one last chance to leave before they moved on, overcoming the crowd of zombies the girls could safely return back to the city they had recently left, taking with them food and ammunition along with transport. May, standing behind him, told him that they could leave without her consent, but in the future they should not turn to her for any help. Afterwards, everyone immediately fell silent, pondering Michael's words. A few minutes later, they said that they were not going to retreat and would carry out any order. After that, he told them to start re-equipping the cars. They will move out tomorrow at 10 o'clock in the morning. Some time later, the work was in full swing. May noticed all the shortcomings and said what exactly needed to be corrected. One of the girls said that this time, May herself was mistaken, because the installation of this part should be different. But Claudia, standing next to her, objected, saying that she could not be mistaken, because the commander supervises them strictly in accordance with the description. May again tried to delve into the drawing and check whether she could have made a mistake, but the noise from their arguments distracted her greatly, and the girl asked them to shut up. Otherwise, they would do the re-equipment on their own without her participation. After her words, they began to say that they could not do it themselves and did not understand the drawing at all. When one of the girls suggested asking Michael for help, May said that he would not solve all their problems if they were not able to cope with the task on their own. There would be no reason for him to keep someone so useless next to him. The hero who approached from behind told her to stop blaming them, while she herself was holding the drawing on the wrong side. Afterwards, he took the paper from her, saying that he would do it himself. The other girls started laughing at her, making her blush in shame. While the girls stood aside, Michael was already hard at work. Sometime later, he wiped the sweat from his forehead with relief, saying that everything was ready. The girls exclaimed joyfully when they saw the updated truck in front of them. They looked at the guy with admiration, 
saying that he had no equal in anything. He smiled and said that now they could make a fire and cook dinner. Alice came up and said that she had checked the shops in the area and found a lot of different things and suggested that they split up and look for supplies in this city because there are a lot of buildings in this city. Michael approved of her proposal. Then he turned to the entire squad, telling them to split into several groups and go in search of food. The girls were already imagining how much food they would bring and receive praise from the hero. Some time later, Michael and his group entered one of the stores. Linda said it was similar to where they first met each other. Embarrassed, she began to remember the events of that day. Intervening, Mina stood between them, telling them to stop talking about the past. She reminded them that they did not come here to coo to each other, but to look for food. After her words, Linda immediately went looking for food. Michael followed the girl with his eyes, thinking about how it would be nice to marry her. She was the only one of all who spent the most time with him. Suddenly, she returned screaming that she had found sausages. She was surrounded by Mina and Alice. They did not believe that they had actually managed to find something like that. Afterwards, Mina pointed to the other shelves, saying that they should collect everything to the maximum. A couple of minutes later, she happily reported that she had found a whole box of instant noodles. Alice boasted that she had found canned pork and biscuits. Suddenly, May approached them and said with a malicious smile that they would never guess what exactly she found. Opening the box she was holding in her hands, everyone saw there were various spices that were very difficult to get in their modern world. The girls looked at it all with eyes full of surprise. Satisfied, Mina looked towards the hero asking what he found. He replied that there was nothing interesting, just a couple of useless things that he was going to throw away. But she didn't believe him and set out to check his find, but the guy grabbed the box and dodged her tenacious hands, telling her not to come near him. But the girl did not give up and the next moment there was a roar and a column of dust rose into the air. Mina was sitting on the back of the lying guy. The girls who saw the dropped contents of this box were confused. There was a pile of women's underwear on the floor. Michael painfully said that he warned that these were useless things, but they didn't believe him. Alice, hiding a smile, asked how he managed to find this kind of thing. Mina came forward, calling the hero a pervert and accusing him of having unclean intentions towards her. He could not restrain himself and slapped her on the head, saying that she was just a child and there could be no talk of any intentions. Linda intervened and saved the girl, reminding her that they needed to continue searching for food. Some time later, everyone moved to search other stores in their area. Linda, who had lagged behind, turned to look at the box left there. She kept returning her thoughts to the underwear that interested Michael. The girl decided to take a few things from there, hoping that someday in the future she would have a chance to surprise the guy. She did not immediately notice someone else's presence. The girls sitting by the box looked at each other in surprise. Feeling awkward, they simultaneously said that they were giving in to each other, allowing each other to choose first. After exchanging glances, they again simultaneously said that they would keep this secret only between them. A few hours later, everyone returned to camp. They were glad that this city was full of food and they could eat well today. One of the girls was surprised to open the box and why there was underwear in this box and so sexy at that. Layla approached her and raising her finger to her lips, said that this was the taste of their boss. She brought this box here because Michael himself was embarrassed to admit it openly. The girl standing next to her offered to wear it and try to seduce him. Their conversation was interrupted by a message that dinner was ready, after which everyone ran up to Alice and Linda. When they were informed that today there would be noodles with ham, the girls looked into the pan with disbelief that they would eat meat. Afterwards, Michael came out to them and said that he had found something good. Mina asked with displeasure whether there were new sets of underwear inside. The hero looked at her with irritation, telling her to shut up. Then he took out a bottle of wine, saying that he found it in one of the cellars. They could warm up a little by drinking a little. Doubting his offer, May said that they still had to fight zombies and drinking alcohol was not the best idea in this situation. Michael said that there weren't that many bottles here. Everyone would get a little of everything, and by the morning everyone would have sobered up. May could only agree with him, but she warned the girls not to get too drunk. Everyone had fun pouring drinks for each other for a while. Michael sat alone, tormented by not the most rosy thoughts. He understood that many might not survive tomorrow, so he gave them the opportunity to relax today. Suddenly, someone approached him, breaking him from his thoughts. Layla sat down next to him and pressed herself against his hand, saying that he had done a lot for her. The only way she could repay him was to devote herself to him. The hero looked at the girl and said that she was drunk, but she replied that she was sober as a glass and just wanted to spend an unforgettable night with him. At that moment, the evil May appeared and asked what they were doing here. Layla pulled away from the guy, saying that they were just chatting. 
But Michael breathed out a sigh of relief, rejoicing at the salvation in the face of the girl who had come. May fell silent for a few seconds, still hovering over the couple. Afterwards, she hugged the hero, asking how Layla dared to take him for herself alone, and suggested that everyone should have fun together. The shocked Michael tried to unhook the girl from him, asking what was happening. Layla replied that her commander gets drunk from just one sip of wine. Suddenly, she went limp in his arms and began muttering incoherent things in her sleep. The next morning, Michael called everyone together to explain the next course of action. He said that Layla would drive ahead in a converted truck, everyone else would follow her, and no one could stop without his order. Then he turned to May, saying that while he would sit on the roof of the truck and help, she would command everyone else. Having measured everyone with a warning glance, he said that if anyone stops or chickens out, he will receive a direct shot in the head. May nodded, answering that she would not let her down. Again addressing everyone, he said that this is a battle of survival and they must do everything possible to achieve the goal and stay alive. Afterwards, he asked if everyone understood him. In response, the girls shouted in unison that everyone understood. The next moment, he turned around and said that in that case, they would move out. A few kilometers from the city, zombies finally appeared. A crowd of several thousand monsters was moving towards their goal. Giant zombies with piles of muscles were ready to destroy everything in their path, getting rid of obstacles. Another giant suddenly let out a piercing roar that spread throughout the entire area. Michael's squad was moving towards them, raising columns of dust behind them. Ahead, as planned, was a converted truck. Everyone else followed immediately behind him. Michael himself was sitting on the truck. Finding the right moment, he shouted that Layla could begin. Immediately after that, she reached for the lever and pulled it down. The truck began to slow down. The hero smiled bloodthirstily. He was wondering what was stronger, namely the zombie's body or his knife. Having noticed their new victim, the zombies were ready to attack. But the hero's blade turned out to be faster. He cut off the heads of dozens of monsters with lightning speed. The truck moved, leaving behind the dead bodies of opponents. Those who were not reached by Michael's blade were mercilessly knocked down by the car. Thus the hero and Layla made their way. A couple of moments later, the truck stopped, driving into a crowd of zombies. Other cars also stopped. Layla tried her best to destroy as many zombies as possible. Alice, right behind her, was glad that their plan had so far progressed without any casualties. Others shared her thoughts, admiring Michael's strength. But a moment later, May climbed out the window of her car, telling everyone except the drivers to start killing the zombies. Immediately after her words, everyone began to take action. Thanks to the cannons built into the machines, they were able to attack from a safe distance. May said that with so many opponents, they don't even need to aim at them, but just shoot. The giants began to roar, preparing to attack. Those closest to the truck rushed forward to remove the obstacle. Michael was already ready for their attack and was waiting for the right moment. Excited, Layla shouted that mutant zombies were approaching them. The hero told her to resume movement and move only forward and activated his ability. He then pushed off from the roof, leaving deep cracks on the surface. Michael fearlessly attacked his enemies. He moved through the zombies with lightning speed, cutting off their heads. A few moments later, he was already flying straight towards the mutants. May watched this picture in bewilderment. The guy's decision to fight three mutant zombies at once seemed crazy to her. She hoped until the last moment that the guy would come to his senses and stop at the last moment. The next moment, the mutants attacked him. Michael himself was determined and had no intention of backing down. He activated his abilities when the zombie's claws were about to overtake him. Having collected enough energy, the hero used the air blade. The body of the first monster began to become covered with cuts from the technique the guy used. A mutant zombie located a little further away also received significant damage. The latter suffered the same fate as the other two. Michael stood breathing heavily. This technique took a lot of strength from him. A second later, the zombies let out a death roar, after which they began to crumble into pieces in front of him. To everyone's surprise, the guy actually managed to defeat three mutant zombies single-handedly. It was the first time the girls had seen such a strong ability in an awakened one. Claudia, who was driving, said that following him was the best decision they had ever made. At the same time, Michael continued to clear the road, destroying small zombies. Dripping with sweat, he shouted for the others to speed up. After his words, the girl immediately switched the handbrake to another position. Layla was determined to do her best. The truck accelerated and began to crush the obstructing zombies. At this time, the hero made his way into the thick of the crowd, getting rid of the zombies. Cutting down another enemy, he noted that they should have already overcome more than half of this endless crowd. The guy was sure that a little more and they would finally get out of here. Suddenly turning around, he froze in horror. A mutant zombie was flying from the mountain straight towards the truck. 
His impact on the surface caused the car to flip over and fly several meters away. When the dust settled to the ground again, Michael approached the zombie that had so suddenly appeared. Turning his attention to the overturned truck, he stopped. The injured Layla pronounced his name with all her strength. The hero stood unable to move. He did not believe that this really happened. Other cars also stopped. The girls were going to help the girl. But Michael shouted that they should not dare stop and, having changed formation, continued further movement. He ordered Mina to clear the way with a rocket launcher. At the same time, the guy would save Layla on his own. May, with tears in her eyes, told them to obey his orders. If anyone dared to disobey, she would personally shoot them. After this, the cars began to move again. The girls trusted Michael, and holding back tears of bitterness got rid of the zombies. A few moments later, the last truck rushed past the hero left alone with the mutant. Having rushed forward, Mina opened the hatch of her car, transferring control to her partner. Once outside, she smiled and aimed her rocket launcher at the enemies. The next moment, she pulled the trigger. Immediately after this, a powerful charge was fired. The explosion that rang out destroyed zombies within a radius of several kilometers. The girl was pleased with the result. She regretted that her strength was not enough to use this weapon more often than she would like. The girls managed to move on. Alice hoped that Michael would make it out alive with Layla. At the same time, the hero rushed at the mutant. The zombie did not move, hanging like a rock over the enraged guy, who was rapidly closing the distance between them. The hero gathered his last strength and used the windsword again. It was difficult for him to control his emotions when his comrade was again on the verge of life and death. Having finished with the mutant, he ran to the truck to check the girl's condition. She was still conscious and told the guy to run away from here, leaving her because she could no longer feel her legs. Layla extended her trembling hand to him. Touching his face, she said that if the world had not ended, then perhaps they could be together. Then her hand fell exhausted to the ground. He cried out her name with tears in his eyes, hoping that the girl would regain consciousness. Having no success, he began to pull her out of the truck. Michael could not let her die like that. Half an hour later, the sun gradually dropped behind the mountains, giving us the opportunity to enjoy the last rays. The crowd of remaining zombies inevitably approached the lying truck. With great effort, Michael managed to pull the girl out. After activating his abilities, he moved towards the zombies with Layla in his arms. By morning, the girls finally overtook the tiger village. Once inside, Linda got out of the car and began to look around. Others were worried that the hero was still missing. Some suggested that he might have died while facing a crowd of zombies alone. A sudden shout caught everyone's attention. Linda tearfully said that Michael couldn't have died, and he and Layla were fine. She then headed to the truck, saying that she would go find them on her own. Alice, who was standing next to her, grabbed her hand, stopping her. She said she would die if she went there. Linda snatched her hand away, screaming that she had to find Michael at any cost. The girl said that if something happened to him, she would not be able to live further. Alice froze when she heard her words. After that, the other girls supported Linda, saying that they would also go on a search. They were filled with hope that the hero might still be alive. May ordered everyone to get into their cars, and they immediately set off to look for him. She was sure that they would all end if Michael died. Mina, who was standing on the truck, looked into the distance and suddenly told the girls to stop. It seemed to her that someone was approaching them. The girl pointed somewhere into the distance, where the outlines of two figures could be seen. A few minutes later, everyone saw a battered Michael carrying Layla in his arms. The girls couldn't believe their eyes. May froze with tears in her eyes, watching the approaching guy. The guy slowly lowered the unconscious girl to the ground under the surprised looks of his squad members. Immediately after this, Linda ran up to the hero, hugging him. He pushed her away, saying that he was fine. There was something more important now. May came up and asked about Layla's condition. Michael replied that several pieces of glass had hit her and the girl had lost a lot of blood. She urgently needed help. One of the girls raised her hand, saying she could help. Nana came forward and said that she used to be a medical student at the university. May turned to her, asking her to save Layla. After examining the victim, she reported that she was in critical condition. The glass got into her internal organs and now she most likely had internal bleeding she would not be able to hold out for long. Frowning, Michael asked about the likelihood of saving Layla's life. Nana sadly replied that with professional surgical equipment, there would be a chance, but in their conditions, this is impossible. The others also fell down at her words. May began to burst into bitter tears, thinking that it would be better if she took the driver's seat. She just had to insist on her own. Lighting a cigarette, Michael told everyone to stop crying. He knew a way to save Layla. Turning their attention to him, the girls asked how exactly he was going to save her. The guy replied that he would explain this later. 
and ordered that a tent be set up for him immediately. The girls immediately ran to carry out the order. After he landed next to Layla, he suggested that the regeneration crystal would help restore damaged organs. If the crystal's energy was not enough, then he would have to use his own to save her. A couple of minutes later, May ran up to him, informing him that the tent was ready. The hero headed there, taking the girl in his arms and warning that no one should go inside. The members of his squad looked after him in surprise. They tried to understand how exactly he was going to treat Layla in the absence of medical instruments. Suddenly, May sat down on the ground and said that they would stay where they were and wait, trusting Michael. She believed with all her might that Layla would live. Meanwhile, the guy went inside the tent and put the girl on the table. Taking the crystal in his hands, he hoped that his energy would still be enough and he would not have to add his own. He then applied it to the chest area, releasing its energy. A moment later, the girl began to make painful moans. These sounds could also be heard outside. The girl standing nearby once again froze in surprise, listening to Layla's moans. When May heard whispers of various assumptions about what was happening inside, she turned to everyone and said that this was just a treatment and not what they imagined. A few minutes later, the crystal turned black and Layla, through her moans, asked not to stop. Michael's fears came true. The crystal's energy was not enough to heal her completely. He would still have to use his own energy, which the guy really didn't want to do. Sighing heavily, he placed his hands, shrouded in radiance, on the girl. He was obligated to help her no matter what. After that, her moans became even louder, echoing throughout the entire camp. Linda, blushing, did not think that anyone would beat her to capturing Michael's attention. The equally embarrassed girls looked at May incredulously, saying that, judging by the sounds coming to them, they were definitely not doing treatment inside. The irritated girl replied that they could not keep their mouths shut, they should get on with their work. Although the other girls had gone their separate ways, May was tormented by the question of what exactly the hero was doing inside, that such sounds were coming from there. Linda approached her and said that they shouldn't invent anything extra for themselves because Michael was simply treating Layla. Suddenly, a hand stuck out from the tent, opening the entrance. The next moment, a completely healthy and happy Layla and an exhausted guy came out, who lit another cigarette. Looking at them, May and Linda had no doubt that these two had slept together. Noticing the strange expression on their faces, Michael asked what happened to them. May, blushing, voiced the assumption that had visited her earlier about what they were doing inside in order to make sure of its veracity. Layla, no less blushing, asked how such a thing could come into her head. She explained that the hero was simply treating her with a life crystal, which was completely different from what they thought. After her words, Linda exhaled with relief. Annoyed, Michael asked what they were thinking. Afterwards, he ordered everyone to get into their cars. They needed to leave here immediately. The girls immediately ran to carry out his order. Linda, who remained next to him, wanted to thank the guy for the help he provided. Without turning around, he replied that he saved her because she was his teammate. Then he moved forward, saying that the girl should get into the car if she did not want to stay here. She sighed, sadly looking after him. She was saddened by his words that she was just his teammate. They moved non-stop for several hours along the mountains. After many hours of grueling travel, Michael and his boys finally reached the village of Two Rivers. The girls got out of the cars, enjoying the fresh air. They were interested in how the hero managed to find such a wonderful and safe place. Michael himself thought that he had finally returned to the place where he was born and raised after so many years. May approached him and asked what they would do in this village. Turning to her, he replied that they were not far from their final destination, so now they should all rest and gain strength, then asked her to take several people to look for something useful here. The girl asked if they should clear this place first because there might be zombies here. Taking out a cigarette, he replied that he was sure that they were not here. The reason why the guy was sure of this was the fact that he personally killed all the inhabitants of this village. Looking at the retreating girls, the hero decided to visit the graves of his grandfather and grandmother. May and her partner approached the house where they decided to start the search. Once in the yard, she noticed spoiled vegetables, but she was alarmed by the fact that several years had passed since the end of the world, and it all should have rotted a long time ago. Looking at the front door of the house, the girl assumed that someone lived here after the onset of the apocalypse. She opened the door wider, stepping carefully into the room. Approaching the table, May noticed that there was not much dust here and that someone lived here not so long ago. She took the diary lying there, hoping to find out information about its owner from there. May opened an entry from September 2020, which described that the grandfather of the owner of the diary became seriously ill, and the guy went to the mountain to get rare herbs. 
The next entry was a month later. It was written there that the guy's grandparents passed away last night. The next page was written in the 32nd year. The girl did not understand how this diary was written several years before. She began to leaf through the diary more actively. Suddenly, May noticed something that caught her attention. At the very bottom of the open page, she read that it was written a year after the end of the world by Michael. The surprised girl did not even notice someone approaching from behind. She was sure that this diary belonged to their boss. Now she was worried about who exactly he wanted to kill so desperately. The hero's voice, heard behind her, brought the girl back to reality. May turned around in fear, hiding the diary behind her back, and asked what he was doing here. The guy took a step forward and grabbed her hand, lifting it up along with the diary. He asked if she had read the contents. May lowered her eyes and replied that she had read quite a bit. She did not know that this thing belonged to him. Without holding back his emotions, Michael asked why she read it. He grabbed her by the throat and pressed her against the wall, saying that no one gave her permission to touch someone's personal belongings. Gasping for breath, she began to repent of what she had done. When she had almost no air left, her voice became weaker. Michael came to his senses, realizing that a little more and he would kill her. He loosened his grip, allowing the girl to sink to the floor. The hero took the diary, apologizing for succumbing to a rush of emotions. The guy headed towards the exit. The girl shouted an apology after him. Turning around, the guy said that she should remain silent about what happened. As May struggled to her feet, she thought that Michael had a rather difficult past. Some time later, the guy climbed the mountain. He thought about his fallen comrades, with whom he fought shoulder to shoulder. The only thing left of them are old graves with wooden plaques. The hero took out a lighter and, deciding to do something for himself, lit a fire. He decided to get rid of the diary with his painful past. Michael vowed to survive for the sake of his fallen comrades at all costs. Suddenly, someone approached him from behind. Noticing someone else's presence, he took out his blade, asking who was there. It turned out to be a girl from his squad. Anna said she saw him going up the mountain and followed him, because she was worried that something might happen to the guy. Lowering his weapon, he replied that he was fine and the girl could come back. When he turned around, Anna grabbed his hand, saying that all these days they had been very happy thanks to him and she would like to repay the guy properly for this. Michael pulled his hand away and replied that they would talk about everything when they returned to the camp. It was not safe here. She stood still, looking at the retreating back of the hero. The girl did not understand why he did not give in to temptation, because she even used the perfume she had found earlier. Suddenly, a wild boar appeared behind her. The girl fell to the ground in fear and began to call Michael for help. Just as the animal was about to pounce on her, she closed her eyes in horror. The guy managed to save the girl at the last moment. A moment later, the boar fell to the ground dead. The hero told the girl not to use this perfume anymore because zombie animals have a heightened sense of smell, and the smell of perfume only provokes them. Then he ordered her to go get someone, and they took the dead carcass to the camp. In the evening of the same day, Everyone had a feast, preparing many meat dishes. May approached Michael, saying that the boar's meat could be traded for many valuable goods in the city, and he shouldn't have allowed them to use it as dinner. He replied that they deserved it, because they had been through a lot in the last few days, after which he asked not to disturb him because he was going to go to bed. Anna saw the guy heading into one of the houses and decided that this was her chance. Finding himself alone, the hero lost track of time as he emptied another bottle of alcohol. He was still tormented by thoughts of his fallen comrades and relatives. Suddenly, the door to the room opened. The girl, frozen on the threshold, asked if she could come in. The intoxicated guy asked who it was. Ignoring his question, Anna came in and said that she couldn't sleep at night, so she came here. Michael called her over, saying they could have a drink together. The girl replied that she did not drink, but he pulled her hand, telling her that everything was okay. Having sat Anna on his lap, the hero said that he had never drunk before either, the girl should just try it to get used to the taste of alcohol. Blushing, she replied that it was too hot for her to be in his arms. He looked at her for a few seconds. Then he put the girl on the bed, hanging on top and said that in this case he could help her undress. Sometime later, Michael, who had sobered up, nervously smoked a cigarette. He realized that he had made a mistake under the influence of alcohol. The girl woke up and hugged him around the neck, asking if she was his girlfriend now. Michael pulled away and stood up, answering that it was too late and she had better go back. Then he threw a crystal on the bed, saying that with this, Anna would be able to buy many things in the city. Disgruntled, she asks what he means by this action. The guy replied that he was very sorry. He was drunk, but he did not need a relationship. And looking at her, he continued, telling her to accept the crystal as compensation. If this is not enough for her, then he can give more. 
Anna jumped out of bed and in a fit of rage threw the stone onto the floor, breaking it. With tears in her eyes, she said that she did not need any crystals. Until that evening, she had never met anyone before. After her words, the hero turned to her again. He apologized, saying that he couldn't get a girl right now and handed her a few more crystals, saying that he could give them to someone else if he wanted. Anna threw all the stones aside, saying that she didn't need anything from him. Then she ran out into the street. Michael thought that she shouldn't blame him for what happened, because in the modern world, everyone is ruthless towards each other. The upset girl ran deep into the mountains. Anna shed tears, accusing the guy of treating her in the most disgusting way. She no longer wanted to see him and decided to leave his squad. Suddenly she was attracted by someone's screams. Anna stood up from her seat and headed towards the sounds, asking who was there. Claudia ran out to her, asking why the girl was not sleeping in the middle of the night. She was surprised to see only her, and asked who Claudia had just been talking to, because she definitely saw two silhouettes. She attributed it to the fact that the girl was too tired, and it could have been her imagination. But Anna insisted, saying that she definitely saw another girl with long blonde hair. Claudia anxiously grabbed her friend by the shoulders, saying that she should just admit that she didn't see anything here. Suddenly, the same blonde girl appeared behind Anna. She said that since the girl noticed her, she had no choice but to get rid of the witness. Anna turned in her direction with horror. The next morning, May told Michael that one of the girls was missing. He asked excitedly who was missing. When the guy heard that Anna was the missing person, he asked if any details regarding the missing person were known. May replied that the reason was unknown, but one of the girls was seen running away with tears in her eyes last night. She told her that she was going to return to the city where they began their journey. The hero said in bewilderment that she would not be able to break through the crowd of zombies alone, not to mention the distance. It seemed strange to May that the guy was so worried about Anna, because they had practically never communicated before. Michael told the girl to stay here with the others while he took the car and tried to get Anna back. May tried to stop him, saying that Anna had taken one of the cars last night and should now be hundreds of kilometers away. The irritated guy slammed his fist against the nearest wall. He didn't understand how she could act so rashly, because this was not a romantic fairy tale for her, where heroes save everyone but the real end of the world. The girl approached him, and in an attempt to calm him down, said that Anna was quite smart. Besides, they destroyed most of the zombies on the way here and nothing should threaten her life. He replied that he didn't care if she was safe or not. The guy was not going to force anyone to stay here, and Anna could go on all fours. Afterwards, he told May to gather everyone. They go to their final goal. After analyzing his reaction, she assumed that there was something between Michael and Anna. Several hours later, they were moving through a dense forest. Due to the lack of a road, Michael's squad had to leave their cars and make their way further on foot. When they came out into the clearing, the hero looked around and, referring to his memories, he found the right mountain, climbing which you can see the research institute. The hero noticed how the fog gradually began to thicken. May approached him, saying that they should stay close to each other, otherwise someone might get lost. Afterwards, he looked around and noticed that the girls were indeed staying in groups too far from each other. He was alarmed by what was happening. Last time this didn't happen. Michael shouted for everyone to get as close to each other as possible. If they noticed anything strange, they should report it immediately. Alice approached and reported that she felt powerful energy ahead. But it did not look like a zombie at all. May suggested going back, but he replied that they could not return, having come such a long way. The guy remembered that there were toxic miasmas here, but they did not pose a serious danger, except for them, they had nothing to fear here. Having thought everything over, the hero said that May and Alice would go with him, the rest should stay here. When he and the girls walked further, an impenetrable fog surrounded them. Michael asked if Alice still felt that energy. She replied that the energy had become fuzzy, disappearing and appearing, and being everywhere at the same time. After listening to her, the hero said that this time, their opponent was not simple and they needed to be very careful. Then he turned to May, asking if she had found anything. But the girl just standing next to her disappeared. Michael turned to Alice, asking her to locate May, but she also disappeared. He was left alone in the thick fog. Deciding that the enemy was somewhere nearby, the guy pulled out a weapon, preparing to attack the unknown as soon as he revealed himself. He was sure that this fog was caused by the enemy's ability. Meanwhile, May found herself completely alone, not noticing where her companions had disappeared. She looked around, hoping that Michael and Alice were somewhere nearby. The girl became wary when she heard quiet steps from the other side. May turned around, hoping that it was someone from her team, but her expectations were shattered in the next moment. A large white deer emerged from the fog. 
He looked straight into her eyes with his blood-red eyes. The girl froze, afraid to move. Her sixth sense screamed at her about the danger lurking in this unusual animal. Alice tried to use her powers to find others, but due to the fog, all her attempts failed. Suddenly, she felt another presence behind her. When she turned around, she saw two bright scarlet rubies looking at her from the fog. The girl tried to understand what was happening, but the next moment a deer came out to her. After analyzing the incident, Michael theorized that the fog might be interfering with his ability to see, hear, and smell. He was obliged to find the one who used this technique, otherwise his companions might be in danger. However, what he saw in front of him the next moment surprised him. A white deer came out to him, enveloped in a scarlet light, the same as his eyes. Michael decided not to act recklessly in attacking the creature. However, a couple of seconds later his consciousness was taken under control. The hero threw all his weapons to the ground. He slowly began to approach the deer, attracted by such a beautiful light that emanated from the animal. The deer itself stood motionless, patiently waiting for the victim to approach him. A moment later it opened its mouth, intending to bite the guy. But Michael dodged and grabbed him by the horns. It was not difficult for the hero to throw off the control of the animal. It was the first time he had seen zombie animals possess such abilities. The animal tried to escape from the guy's grasp. Michael noted that although the deer had mutated, it was still physically weak. The next moment, the guy attacked the animal with his blade. Immediately after this, the fog cleared a little. Michael assumed that there must be other mutated deer nearby. He began to move deeper. The guy noticed that although the fog prevented him from feeling, he could feel the sound reflecting from the ground. Therefore, the hero decided to use vibration to detect all enemies. His idea worked and the guy managed to discover the enemy's location. He immediately went there. At the same time, Alice, like Michael earlier, succumbed to mind control and approached the monster. Suddenly, she felt a vibration. The girl regained consciousness, not understanding what was happening here. The deer did not want to miss its prey and opened its mouth, attacking the girl. Alice jumped back, overcome with horror. Michael, who appeared at the last moment, killed the animal, saving the girl. He then turned around and asked if she was okay. Alice replied that she was fine, but May was in danger and they should help her as soon as possible. Smiling, he said that May has the ability of stone skin and these deer will not be able to do anything to her. Confirming his words, the next moment a girl came out to them, joyfully saying that they would have venison for dinner today. Alice and the hero looked in surprise towards the approaching May. She actively talked about how the monster tried to bite her, but because of her ability he was unable to do it. Then she simply beat the animal to death. Michael praised the girl for managing to cope on her own. A few hours later, when the sun had already begun to disappear behind the horizon, they finally climbed the mountain from where they could see the city. To the hero's surprise, there was no poisonous air this time, which made his task much easier. One of the tall structures with a crystal on top was surrounded by thousands of zombies. May pointed to this building and asked if it was the place Michael wanted to go to so badly. He nodded. The hero assumed that some secrets must be kept inside. He would be able to find out who and why sent him into the past for a short moment. The guy ordered the girls to call everyone else here. They must get inside that building at any cost. Sometime later, Michael's squad began to actively destroy zombies. Deafening explosions were heard everywhere. The machines moved forward unhindered towards their goal. Mina was glad that she finally got to have a lot of fun with her rocket launcher. May, who followed her, commanded the other girls. The hero said that they can leave those zombies who are in front of him. He then took out his blades, gathering energy. The next moment he jumped out of his seat. Michael flashed over dozens of corpses with lightning speed, moving towards his opponents. The hero easily made his way through this crowd. Alice shouted joyfully that Michael had cleared the way for them and they could move on. Some time later they managed to approach the institute. They stopped at the main entrance to the building. May shouted that while the hero with Linda and Alice explored the building, she and the others would deal with the remaining zombies outside. Michael told them to be careful and hide inside the building in case of danger. Once inside, the hero and his companions discovered a huge crystal. Mina, who joined them, was disappointed to come all this way for the sake of one crystal. The hero himself froze in front of him, not paying attention to the girl's words. He felt an unusual connection with this crystal. Approaching, the guy carefully touched him. After this, a strange glow began to emanate from the crystal. Michael disappeared in front of his companions, causing them bewilderment and panic. Opening his eyes, the guy found himself in a place unknown to him. Looking around, he assumed that he was inside the crystal. Suddenly, a child's voice was heard saying that the hero was finally able to get here. The next moment, a little girl appeared, saying that she had been waiting for his arrival for a long time. Michael turned in her direction, asking who she was. 
Smiling, the girl replied that he should not be afraid of her. As for her personality, she has many names and incarnations. In earthly myths, she is most often called Gaia, after which she said that it was she who sent him into the past for a short moment. The hero asked in disbelief why him and what her goal was. Gaia replied that she wanted to destroy all the zombies in order to restore peace and order on Earth. She sent countless people to cope with this task, but among all, Michael was the only one who managed to stay alive. Afterwards, she said that he again needed to go back in time before the apocalypse began, and his mission would be to stop the spread of the zombie virus. But this time he would not be able to go back in any of the outcomes. The guy asked what would happen to his team. The girl replied that she could protect them for a while. If he could stop the virus, then the history of the world would be rewritten and everyone would survive. Otherwise, she said that she would gradually lose her power and the whole world would end. Gaia said that everything depends only on him and she is not going to force him. The next moment, a sphere appeared in front of him. He was informed that if he touched it, he would be sent to the past and would be able to change everything. If not, then he would remain in this reality to live out his life with the zombies. It didn't take the guy long to make a decision. He touched the sphere, saying that he wanted to change everything. The next moment, Michael disappeared, and Gaia wished him luck, hoping that he would succeed because she used her last powers, giving him the opportunity to save the world. The hero returned to the world before the start of the apocalypse. The window at the supermarket where he first met Linda was still broken. The girl herself stood in front of the store where she worked. She thought about the guy who saved her from the bandit a few minutes earlier. Linda hoped that she would be able to thank him when he left the warehouse. Literally the next second the door opened and a guy came out, telling her his name. The girl said that he spent quite a long time in the warehouse and was already starting to worry. Michael approached and said that he was looking for one very important thing and she need not worry. Then he took Linda by the hand, saying that it was time for them to leave here. When the surprised girl asked where they were going, he answered with a smile that they were going to save the world. 